Oh, good evening and a very warm welcome to part two of our Super Thursday of Forces Sport here on our BFBS YouTube and Facebook channels. You're very welcome. Do you know what? We had a great afternoon with the, the netball, didn't we, up at uh, Cosford earlier on. A really good win for the RAF against the Navy. A really close battle there. But we are here tonight uh, at uh, HMS Drake in Plymouth. Uh, we're in the uh, the senior rates mess here for a wonderful prospective evening of Forces Boxing. It's the 2023 Inter-Services Championship. And it's a great pleasure for me once again to welcome the first lady of women's boxing in the Forces. And that is Lieutenant Commander Lucy O'Connor. Lucy, great to have you alongside here once again at ringside and we really are ex looking forward to a great night aren't we it's going to be a fantastic night of boxing we had a little taster in the semi-finals on tuesday uh, and we've got a lot to look forward to tonight now you watch those semi-finals so you've actually got, had a, a sneak preview maybe of, uh, of what's to come in terms of, of some of the quality let me just sort of update you on the, on the situation tonight basically it's the first team that gets to five wins will win the championship now the army of course they are the holders the current holders of the services championship and uh, they might only need to win four bouts tonight to actually level it and therefore to claim the title uh, for the RAF, unfortunately, they've only got one boxer in the men's competition, so they can't win the title. Uh, but the Royal Navy most certainly can, can't they? And uh, one thing we're just sort of looking at, if we maybe go through the uh, the card this evening, Lucy, is the number of newcomers and people that maybe we haven't seen before in the boxing ring. Uh, obviously, we've got two female bouts, and we'll be starting off uh, with the first one uh, this evening, which will be Neve Brooks from the Army taking on Brittany Walker from the Royal Navy. I'm looking forward to that one straight away. Uh, and then later Later on, the first bout at the end of uh, beginning of the, the second uh, half of the evening will be Private Lily Devlin from the British Army against uh, AS1 Frankie Lyle from the RAF. Another that looks like a cracking event because those two, Lyle and uh, and Walker, actually met, didn't they, this time last year? So I bet you're looking forward to that one, aren't you? I am, yes, absolutely. Brittany Walker has now moved down a weight. She's gone from 57 to 54, uh, from Feather to, to Bantam. Um, and so she boxed Lyle last year. So it'd be interesting to see how, how different she performs at 54 I think 54 is the right weight for her so I'm excited so two really cracking women's bouts that we're looking forward to sadly and I know that we both agree very much on this one that they 
don't count towards uh, tonight's inter services. There are two walkovers already in favour of the, the army, uh, and obviously we have the semi final. So the army already have two points in the bag, and that basically means that in effect they only need three wins out of the, the seven bouts ahead. But they're going to be difficult ones, aren't they? Because if we look at those, Private Lewis Harvey from the British Army, that's in the lightweight category. That will be the second bout of the evening. He takes on uh, AET Terence McIlroy. That's apparently the correct pronunciation of his name uh, from the Royal Navy. Uh, that looks like a, a very tasty, uh, tasty encounter. Yeah, they're both quick. They're both very talented, uh, very technical boxers. So it will be a fast paced 60, as you'd expect, a uh, fast paced bout. And uh, then we move on to number three, light welterweight contest, 63 kilos. Uh, Fusilier Rob Jones of the British Army will take on Ewan Thomas, ETME Ewan Thomas, again of the Royal Navy. And of course, these early bouts are going to be really quite crucial, aren't they? The Navy will want to get a few points under the under their belt. We want to put well the Navy. Sorry, we want to put the pressure on the <laughs> Army. I'm very I'm very impartial here. Uh, the Navy wants to put a lot of pressure on the Army early doors um, and get, as you say, get the points in the bag. Um, they need to. They've They've got an uphill uh, battle today, um, but they've got every, um, I'm sure, every will to, to win that trophy back. Yeah, well, you can hear already we've got a great atmosphere building. This is actually not a huge area, but there's going to be 500 people in here tonight. And uh, so we really are looking forward to uh, a brilliant atmosphere once we get started. There'll be a ring walk before too long, before we have the national anthem. Moving on to bout number four tonight, welterweight contest. Private Jordan Shaw from the British Army takes on AS1. Taylor Andrew from the RAF and of course if the Navy are going to have any real chance of winning tonight seriously they need the RAF to do them a favour and actually uh, Taylor Andrew is the only Air Force male competitor tonight and it's going to be a good one uh, I reckon that this could be one of the bouts of the night at welterweight Yes, yeah, certainly. I, I must admit, I haven't seen Taylor Andrew. I've not seen him in box, but I did see Jordan Shaw box on Tuesday. Um, he's very impressive. Um, he um, He's very fast. He's quite flary. Um, so I think uh, Taylor Andrew's got a lot to, a lot to do to, be, to beat this kid. He has. And uh, unfortunately for the Air Force, Brad Axe, who was someone I was looking forward to seeing, uh, Brad knocked, he actually got knocked out in the semi-final, didn't he? He lost his semi-final bout. Brad is based over in Cyprus uh, and uh, just wondering whether he was a bit ring rusty and didn't have enough you know, competitive action. But uh, apparently he was well beaten in that semi-final. I think it was it, it was it, it was a good very good fight it was a very competitive fight and Braddock boxed really well I just think um, you know uh, he didn't get it on the occasion but um, he didn't seem to be ring rusty he seemed to be very capable uh, and just didn't get the decision on the night okay well uh, Brad not competing but uh, certainly a big night for Taylor Andrew there from the RF in bout number four our last bout in the first half of the, the card this evening uh, will be uh, at uh, light middleweight uh, May, uh, 71 kilos uh, Lance Corporal James McCool from the British Army taking on Marine Lucas France and the Royal Navy. Now, we've got a lot of Marines involved tonight, and I know a lot of people who love Navy boxing are so glad to see the Marines really heavily involved tonight. They've always had a huge presence within Navy boxing. Um, it, it, they, you know, they spend a lot of time uh, boxing training as part of their general training, and they, they really do bring strength and depth uh, to the Navy team. We certainly couldn't uh, manage without them. OK. So that'll take us up to the interval. We'll have a 20-minute interval, which we'll be staying on there and bringing you all the updates on the latest Forces Sports News. So don't go away. But you make yourself a cup of tea or something. But make sure you stay with us on, uh, on Forces News Facebook and on our YouTube channel. Back after about 20 minutes for the second half of the bill tonight. And uh, again, we're going to start off with the, the second of uh, the female encounters this evening, featherweight contest. Private Lily Devlin of the British Army against AS1 Frankie Lyle of the... RAF and uh, I think we're, we're, again it's another bout we're really looking forward to Lucy. Yeah absolutely again Frankie Lyle boxed in the semi-finals on Tuesday she's very impressive she's very tall she's a very rangy boxer uh, and she made the most of that on Tuesday against her, her sort of shorter Royal Navy opponent and so um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how she deals with uh, her army opponents today. How much do you think it will help her having had that semi-final you know, okay, it was only 48 hours ago uh, and fitness will not be an issue but you know, for, for a boxer who's then competed quite recently and knows the atmosphere, knows the feeling that's going to be like in this ring, is that going to be helpful for her? 
you know, it, you know, sometimes people think that getting a buy is is uh, a benefit, but actually, you really in a in a multi bout competition, it's really helpful to get into the swing of things, and certainly to get into the swing of things uh, in an earlier uh, in, in the semifinals or in quarterfinals. It just it just gets you in the mindset, and and it kind of get, blows away any cobwebs, it blows away any nerves and anxieties, and you really are in the swing of the competition. So I think she's got the advantage there. Okay, so that's going to be bout number six. Moving on to the seventh bout of the evening, which is a middleweight contest, uh, male 75 kilos, Fusilier Connor Moore. Now, that's a name that I do recognise. I think he's been, a, we, we've seen him before, against Marine Grant Cooks of uh, the Royal Navy, Royal Marines. So, again, uh, you know, about that... Uh, could be a, it could be a real game changer actually in the course of the evening depending on how things go yeah and having said that uh, getting the buyers is, is not necessarily an advantage I think in this case uh, Crooks would disagree with me he had a really tough bout in the semi-finals it was a real war uh, and so Against actually Bradax, wasn't it? Uh, yes yeah. it was yeah, yeah. Um, and it was a great it was a great bout but I think um, you know he will have needed that day's rest uh, and of course uh, Connor Moore goes in there fresh um, so yeah I'm sure he's fit you know he's absolutely fit enough Grant, is, Grant Crooks is very fit um, but uh, yeah he'll, he'll certainly be feeling that no doubt he will uh, a couple of, uh, I say, we've got a couple of walkovers uh, at 80 kilos, uh, so we won't have an 80 kilo fight tonight. And also the uh, super heavyweight contest right at the end, we won't have a, a contest there. Those are the two walkovers in favour of the army. So those points they've got won't actually come into play until later on in the contest. That takes us to bout number eight. Corporal Nick Wright of the British Army takes on Marine Joel Hassan from the Royal Navy. And again, when you get to cruiserweight, then, you know, the sparks start flying, don't they? They really can. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And again, Joel Hassan boxed in the semi-finals. Um, so uh, he's into the competition. He had another quite hard bout. Um, so he, we, he will have uh, spent yesterday resting, no doubt. Uh, and again, Nick Wright is fresh. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, those were the three semi finals that we were talking about and then the final bout of the evening will be the heavyweight contest Lance Corporal Jack Hindmarsh British Army against Marine Gabriel Rand Silver uh, from uh, the Royal, obviously the Royal, Royal Navy and uh, well again everything could hinge on that you know I think if you're a neutral here which of course I am and basically you are too Lucy you know we're really hoping that the the whole contest will hinge on the result of, of that last bout because that really takes us to a, a fantastic climax, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And we've got uh, two new, relatively new faces uh, for the for the ultimate uh, for the ultimate bout. So, uh, yeah, really looking forward to seeing. Uh, there's always sparks, as you say, flying in the in the heavy. Well, our timing is pretty perfect there, and uh, looking after things in the ring this evening for us is W01 uh, Glyn Luke. He's the MC, and he is introducing everything now for the guests here and for us here as well, watching live here on Forces News Facebook and on our YouTube channel. Elite Boxing Championships. I would like to welcome you all on behalf of the Devonport Naval Base Commander. Brigadier Mike Tanner, OBE, ADC, Royal Marines, Chairman of the Royal Navy Boxing Association. So it's good to see you here this evening. Right, let's get, up, get down to business. Let's welcome in the boxers. Let's hear it for the boxers! Okay, it's ring walk time then. All the boxers now marching into the, uh, stu the uh, ring here, and uh, we are really privileged to have these people here, these young men and women who are taking it on this evening. And, you know, Lucy, I was going to say, if we could hear ourselves above the, the noise, that these, these guys and the girls, it's the ultimate in bravery, isn't it, in a way, to get into this ring in front of 500 people and really go for it. Crazy when you think about it, isn't it? I mean, what a sport that we do. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Anyone who steps through the ropes, it doesn't matter at what level, whether it's grassroots or elite boxing, as we're seeing here today, um, shows you know military uh, bearing, military courage, or uh, to get in the ropes in the first place, and, and, and we should all respect that. It is fantastic, and uh, so there we are. These are the boxers. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding. Please be upstanding for the national anthem.
Well, if that hasn't got you roused and ready for a great night of boxing, I'm not sure what has. Very shortly, the boxers will leave the ring and we'll have our candidates for the very first bout joining us around the ropes as the, the boxers now leave the ring. And for all of them, I'm sure there'll be a few butterflies in the tummy, especially for the ones who are having to wait a little bit later. I say we're live on our Forces News Facebook and uh, also our YouTube channel tonight and wherever you are watching around the world, let's say a very good evening to you. And already Franco Glavis is, uh, uh, that's LT Abel commentating. Yeah, he, he, knows you, he knows you, Lucy, but he's in New Zealand tonight. Uh, and uh, that's rather nice to know that someone on the other side of the world is listening to your every word. It's great to hear from him. Good evening to you, Franco. Glenn McAllister is uh, also with us this evening. Good evening to you. And say, wherever you are around the forces world or anywhere around the world, we would love to hear from you uh, this evening as we prepare, of course, for the excitement then of uh, the first bout. And that first bout, as we say, is going to be a, a female encounter at uh, Bantamweight uh, with uh, Neve Brooks of the British Army. Uh, she's taking on uh, Brittany Walker. We know all about Brittany. We've seen her quite a few times. Don't know too much about Neve, so I'm looking forward to, to seeing her in action. But there's an awful lot of talent, you know, in amongst the uh, the uh, the Army women setup, isn't there? Now down at uh, Aldershot. Yeah, and it's great to see. It's great to see the the female uh, contingent growing, both within the Army and the, and the Navy, uh, and of course the RAF. Um, but yes, the the Army are leading the way at the moment in terms of numbers. So just waiting then for the. Uh, the first of the boxers to appear. A great sense of anticipation here in the uh, in the auditorium tonight. And uh, I say the choice here of the uh, of the warrant officers and uh, the senior rates mess. Not a bad one, actually, Lucy, is it? I'm sure you've been in here a couple of times before and experienced this. I actually had a, a tweet the other day from a friend of mine who actually, his uh, friend got married in here. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> it's a great it's a great venue, as you said before. You know, it's a really intimate environment and it really echoes in terms of the, the support um, and makes it a fantastic uh, place to box. It really does. And uh, so... Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, bring on the boxers for belt... Number one. Okay, so let's bring on the boxers then. We've got uh, this phantom weight contest for uh, the uh, women. And uh, I say, Neve Brooks against Brittany Walker. It's all gone dark in here, but I'm sure it's going to lighten up in a minute. And apologies for any strobing effects that you might uh, experience here, just to give you a fair warning that uh, obviously the full atmosphere here in the ring tonight is going to be generated by all of this. And uh, so hopefully uh, you're not uh, affected by the, the strobe lighting effect uh, for too long. And uh, we will get the boxers into the ring. So in the red corner, we have Neve Brooks. He's a craftsman based with the Queen's Dragoons Guards, uh, with the Remy, core in the Remy. Her hometown is from Bristol. And uh, her greatest achievement, she says, is becoming the national development champion. That's not a bad achievement to have, is it? That's absolutely amazing, yeah. Um, there's a lot of women at the development level at the moment. So to be the champion is, uh, is something to really crow about. So Neve just getting prepared. And in the blue corner, just getting prepared as well on that far side, is uh, Brittany Walker. She's uh, with the uh, 820 Naval Air Station, Naval Air Squadron, hometown Barnsley in South Yorkshire. And she says her greatest achievement is winning the Winter Box Cup. 17 bouts to her name, 12 wins and 5 defeats. So she's had a pretty good career so far. She's becoming a bit of a stalwart of inserted service boxing. We've seen her on a number of occasions now, John, haven't we? Uh, and she certainly is uh, one of the most experienced uh, female boxers, if not uh, male boxers, within the uh, setup tonight. So Brooks might have her work cut out here, um, although she's stepping into the ring now. And she'll put the head guard on. And how proud are you to see, you know, the women boxers and female boxers? Well, we've come on such a long way, both in the services and out with the services nationally and internationally. Uh, and we continue to see the numbers of females growing within the sport. It's accepted. It's not uh, It's not unusual now. And, and you know, every, when, when we see females on a boxing show, it's not, it's not unusual. And indeed, it's expected. And that's a great place to be. 
Absolutely. Well, I'll be doing a dual role this evening, by the way, because I'll be actually doing the interviews with the the boxers at the end of uh, each uh, of the bouts. Um, I'll have to sort of leg it across to the corner. So, uh, Lucy, I might have to leave the, the microphone in your capable hands while I'm there, but uh, there'll be plenty going on, I'm sure, in the room. Gonna get, the interviews will be very quickly done. And uh, I know that uh, Glyn is very, uh, very, uh, uh, Luke, uh, Glyn is very, keen to get uh, things moving as quickly as he possibly can throughout the course of the night so we will get ourselves ready then referee for this first contest this evening is uh, Stu Mack Royal Air Force he's proudly got his RAF crest on the back of his uh, his shirt as you can see there talking to uh, Brittany earlier I think she's pretty confident but it's uh, never easy, of course, starting a card off, is it? You know, being the first off in the evening. No, it's not. But actually, it's quite nice to get it out of the way, if I'm honest, <laughs> so you can enjoy the rest of the evening. <laughs> well, both of these boxers will certainly enjoy it if they uh, end up being the winners. Belt number one is a 54 kilogram bantamweight contest between, in the red corner, representing the army, Craftsman e So Neve gets a warm welcome from all the army contingent here, and believe me, there's a big contingent from the British Army and here. In the blue corner, representing the Royal Navy, AEC. The home crowd rise to their their young competitor. And that must give both boxers a huge boost, and there's that, that support there. So let's see then how uh, we progress then in this first contest of the night. of these rounds. Great start from the, the Navy girl from Brittany Walker, straight in there, very quickly, making these early points count. On the on the front foot straight away, Lucy. Yeah, we've got two southpaws here. Um, so, you know, they certainly you know, don't get the advantage sometimes of boxing an orthodox boxer. We've got Brittany doing exactly what she needs to do on the front foot. She works it from, from body to head just to get inside that taller range. Neve just having to get her composure going before she can actually get started really and, and launching her own attacks but it's uh, it's Walker who's making all these early moves in these first parts of this first round great start from her got a confident look on her face it's a good, a good left and a good right Again, she's the more aggressive of the two. I think boxing now tends to be about perception. You know, the more you can be on the front foot, the more you can kind of appear to be dominant um, is, is a real advantage. So to, to press on that front foot, to take the space away from your opponent uh, gives you a better advantage. Great shot there. Yeah, she's got those, got those jabs in there early on and... You think that Brooks has got to just respond a little bit because this round might be getting away from her, this first round. And again, great left and right combination from the Navy. Air squadron, girl from 820. And again, Brooks having to defend really, just having to hold her opponent off. She's got a slight height advantage. She has, she needs it. to use it. Yeah, she needs to lead off, she's waiting well, a little again, bit too look long. Look at this, great left and a right, great combinations again, getting those jabs and a couple of hooks in going from Brittany Walker. Referee just separates them. And again, on the attack. But a, a good reply then from Neve Brooks, just got a couple of scoring punches in there. The helper, but Walker looking confident, getting towards the end of this first round. Yeah, Brooks just needs to do a little bit more for me on that first phase. She needs to prompt the Walker. She takes a nice step back and then counters on the second phase. At the moment, she's waiting a bit too long for me. That's better. Yeah, 
Just the last few seconds then of this opening bout, this opening round, and oh, great combinations, and she's really opened up there. And a, 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 a count. And you can see that one coming, can you? But she might be saved by the bell here. She'll be absolutely fine, but uh, that's a great, um, a great yeah. finish to the first round for Brittany Walker. Definitely taking that first round. Does Brittany Walker should be really pleased with that? A few conversations now will be had, I'm sure, in the the red corner here, in the army corner. But uh, yeah, Brittany Walker showing her her class there towards the end, really going for it. Great phases. She's put the punches together. You know, she has to get inside that taller range, and so she does that really well. She goes to the body first to get her feet in, and then finishes off nicely. What would you be saying to Nee Brooks now then, you know, if you were up there with uh, James, obviously, uh, in her corner at the moment? She needs to hold the centre, she needs to be first, so she needs to throw those nice, strong, straight shots out. She needs to allow Brittany to fall in, and then she needs to counter on the back foot and then move off to the side. She still needs to hold the centre, and she can do that with, with her range, and she's got power, you can see, but she just needs to make, make use of that. And she needs to come out strong in this uh, first part of the second round, otherwise it could get away from her. Definitely uh, Walker's first round there. And then we start for the second round of uh, this opening contest at Bantamweight. Neve Brooks in the red from the army and straight away, Brittany Walker is on the attack, on the, on the front foot already. Little jabs there, pushing away with her right. And again, quick response there from Brooks. Walker again, just really difficult for, for Brooks, isn't it, to really make any headway in this bout so far? Yeah, I think it is, and, and you know, perhaps she needs to make uh, take advantage of the fact that Brittany's actually got some quite low front hand there, and she's trying to draw Brooks in, um, but I think, you know, with some good, nice, fast, straight shots, she can take advantage and of again, the low hands. A lovely left hook then, and again, making the most of it, the referee's going to have to call a halt just for now. Another standing count. Great display of boxing by Brittany Brilliant Walker. left hook there from, uh, from Walker, though. Takes the eight, takes the standard eight. Referee allows it to continue, but I wonder for how much longer is this going to continue. Walker just biding her time, just fending her off with the right to save the southpaw. And again, tries to get that left hook in. She needs to be quite patient now. She doesn't need to be trying trying too hard to get her out of the ring. She needs to just use her skills like she has been now and make it convincing. Jabbing away. Without taking any risks. And again, this tenacious young woman. And again. And again, there's a flying the right and the left. Great phases. It's a picture of concentration on her face at the moment, you can see. And uh, Neve Brooks doing really well at the moment, holding her position in the ring, but takes one, takes another hook, and takes, and that'll be it, surely. I can't see how this is going to continue, because that's three times now that uh, Walker has caught her with the left hook and then gone for the kill. And it's all over. A magnificent performance there from Brittany Walker. Stopping her opponent, Kieran Brooks, or Need Brooks, I should say, in the second round. I mean, what can you say? That was a magnificent bit of uh, boxing there from uh, from the Navy girl. Well, that was exceptionally convincing. She's worked really hard on her fitness. She's worked really hard on upping the numbers of shots that she's thrown, and we can just see what the result of that was. Yeah. But still great support then for the army boxer there. She fought a really good battle, but up against a high-class opponent there. Really high-class opponent in, in Brittany. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for the boxers! Ladies and gentlemen, the referee stopped the contest in round two. And the winner, in the blue corner, representing the Navy, Walker! Great start for Walker then. 
She just goes over to shake the hands of everybody, as does uh, as does Neve Brooks as well. And I'm going to go and take my position for the uh, interview. So I'll see you again in a few seconds. class walkover is Lance Corporal Terry Lee. Stuart, representing the Army. Well, apologies that we couldn't bring you uh, an interview with the, the two women boxers, their female boxers. We will be catching up with them at the interval. Uh, that's a promise. At the moment, the two walk two walkovers just being pronounced uh, over there for boxers who, for the female and the belts, winner of the 66 kilogram class walkover, didn't compete. Despite Sophie Colborn representing the Royal Navy. I'm sure those two boxers will be very disappointed. They uh, they couldn't uh, compete tonight. Both walkovers. Are we ready? Ring of the boxers for belt number two. Okay. Well, the second bout then that's about to happen, and this is the the first round of the inter-services men's competition this evening, and it's a lightweight contest between the Army's Private Lewis Harvey from 27 Regiment RLC, and he's taking on Terence McElroy from RNAS Yeovilton. He's from Skelmsdale in Lancashire. So here we go then. Boxers now into the ring, and this is going to be an interesting contest, Lucy. I think I'm looking forward to it very much indeed. And this is where the men's in the service of 23 and 3 Championship gets underway. Absolutely, it's going to be fast and furious, sir. So we're in for some uh, pretty good entertainment. As they take to the ring, and uh, Stuart O'Connor, your other half, wishing the Royal Navy all the very best this evening. I think uh, he's over there uh, somewhere over in Eastern Europe at the moment. Yeah. And I think he's in Latvia at the moment. So say hi to him. <laughs> hi there, Stu. Lucy is doing a great job for us uh, on the commentary this evening. Glenn McAllister, good evening to you, Glenn. And uh, wherever you are around the force as well, we'd love to hear from you. So, 
Lewis Harvey then, a private in 27 Regiment RLC, his hometown Wolverhampton, and his greatest achievement so far is the UCAF Elite Champion at this weight category, at lightweight. And his opponent this evening in the blue corner is Terence McIlroy from Royal Naval Air Station, Yeovilton. Comes from Skelmsdale in Lancashire. His greatest achievement, Merseyside and county champion. Uh, 22 bouts to his name. He's got eight wins and he's lost 14. So he'll be hoping for a, a ninth win tonight. Yeah, I think they say that records are for DJs and not for boxers, John. So <laughs> I think we shouldn't take anything from that. Uh, Terence is a real uh, prospect. So we'll see how he gets Ladies on tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, bout number two is a 60 kilogram lightweight contest between in the red corner, representing the army, Representing the Royal Navy, A.T. Tellers McQuarrie! The aircraft technician then from Yeovilton. And quite a few people, I'm sure, have popped down here to Plymouth from uh, Yeovilton this evening to see this. A good contingent of air stations down here to support. Absolutely. So... How is this going to shape up? Remember, this is the first scoring contest for the 2023 Inter Services champion. The referee is Paul Rosedale from the Royal Air Force. And straight away, Harvey making his impact. Again, leading from his right. He's certainly the most experienced of the two, isn't he? I think in terms of his uh, elite championship for UCAF. And he gets a good punch there in. Just making his presence felt. Both men really going for it in these early stages. Good countering there from McIlroy. Below the belt, I think that one. I think the referee will have a quick word with him about that. A bit questionable, Lucy. I didn't think it was on the belt, to be honest. That was a bit harsh. It was a great shot, nice little bolo. And that's, that's, a, that's exactly what he needs to do. Um, he needs to sort of slip that front hand, come up with a bolo. And he's using his rear hand quite well, stepping on the outside. And that's what they both need to do. It looks to me like uh, Harvey's got quite a useful little left hook there. Uh, he's tried to make it count a couple of times already. The two fighters just closing on each other at the moment don't think uh, McIlroy was too happy with that Harvey being told to box on yeah Harvey's dominating the centre now as you can see so Terence needs to get back into the middle try and convince the judges that he's taking charge good exchange there between the two very close so far in this first round Bit of holding there, a bit untidy in these openings few moments here. But it's Harvey, I think, who's just having the greater say so far. Terence is covering up well, he's countering well. I just think the position in the ring of Harvey just makes him look slightly more dominant and might catch the eye of the judges at the moment. He's certainly got a height advantage over his uh, naval opponent. Good counter from Mac McIlroy there, just getting one in. Just jabbing away is, is Harvey, using the right, and again looking for that left hook. And again, gets a hook in there, there's a scoring punch there, definitely. See the battle of the front foot there, they're both trying to keep their foot on the outside of each other's feet, just to stay away from their respective backhands. As we approach the end of this... First round, just a few seconds to go. Not much in it, and that's a really good counter then from McIlroy, a right and a left. Great yeah. first round. Yeah, very close first set round. I think if I was giving it to anyone, it would probably just go to the man in red. Very, very briefly, yeah. So 
So the head coach is busy at work tonight. The Army, Shane Sadler, hard at work. And the Royal Navy's Joel Kirby as well, busy at the moment, uh, having his say with, uh, with Terence McIlroy. And uh, they've got to, just a, a couple of minutes to get those instructions through. What will they be saying? What will certainly, I'm just wondering what to, what the, the Navy corner will be up to at the moment, because he actually recovered very well, didn't he? He did, actually. There's some really sharp counter-punching. He was catching Harvey um, after he threw his nice laybacks and countering. He just needs to do that from the middle of the ring, so it looks dominant. Ready for round two, then. We've counted that even, but what do we know? As the bell goes for the second round here of this contest at lightweight between these two men. It's already lining up, isn't it? Harvey with a left and a right, trying to make his mark there. Good defensive work, though, from McIlroy. Gets one in there just with his right, quick right jab. McCoy just needs to lead off a bit more. He's a bit passive. He's, he's reacting uh, to Harvey, which looks as if Harvey is taking charge again. So he just well, needs to lead off to start with. Yeah, Harvey's boxing the ring. You can see his position right in the middle of the ring. He's, but that was a, a good counter there, a, a jab coming in from McIlroy. Harvey's got to be careful, make sure he's not got his guard down, because McIlroy can bounce back. He's a bit of a bumblebee, isn't he? He stings a bit. Just to quote a Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Harvey again though, the middle ground countering though from McIlroy he's getting a few scoring punches in that'll, that will impress the judges I want to see a few more combinations from McIlroy he's throwing those single shot counters effectively but he needs to follow it up with some more punches it's almost like he's sort of biding his time isn't he he doesn't mind taking a few and then stings like that well, that was good defence there from Harvey to keep him out. Live here on Forces News YouTube and Facebook tonight, the 2023 Inter Services Boxing Championships. Live here from HMS Drake in Plymouth. Great to be down here in glorious Devon. I think we've avoided the worst of the winter weather. So if you if you're sat in snow somewhere tonight then enjoy this as Harvey again makes his mark but again a good position from McIlroy he's now assumed that middle position good languid shot aren't they? both of these men McIlroy's almost toying with his opponent at the moment. Yeah, I'm not sure he can afford to do that. I think he still needs to keep those high hands. Well, that's a good counter. Great countering from the Ovalton man. Harvey certainly got his work cut out here in these latter stages of the second round. Do you know, Harvey's throwing the punches, but actually McIlroy's defending the majority of them. They're not scoring punches, and those single shots might be catching the judge's eye at the moment. So I reckon we might have a round of peace at the end of this. Yeah. The last few seconds then counts down. End of round two. It's a really close even contest, isn't it, Lucy? It looks to be, certainly. Just uh, remember a chance for you to say hello if you want to this evening. We're keeping an eye on uh, all the messages coming through to us from around the world. And uh, Ali Cooper, Helen Patricia says, Ali Cooper, this is where Elle has gone tonight. Absolutely. Somewhere in the crowd, no doubt. <laughs> and certainly a lot of the chatter around the ring here, around the where we are, is how tight and how close this is after the first two rounds. Ready for the third and final round of this contest. And both these men have fought themselves very, very hard indeed. Harvey then in the red corner, Mac McIlroy in the blue corner for the Royal Navy. This opening match in the men's inter-services 
Boxing Championship for 2023. Remember, the Army of the Holders, they only need to win four, and if the points are in their favour, they will retain the title, but five wins tonight will guarantee the Army the Championship, in fact, it will guarantee the Navy the Championship as well. So, a lot to play for, awful lot to go for. A lot of boxing to happen in the next couple of hours here in Plymouth. Good combination from Harvey again. Two, all defended though by McElroy and Harvey's taking a bit of a back step now. He's sitting on the back foot a little tiny bit. I'm not sure he can afford to do that. He needs to make it clear. McElroy, if he throws a few more punches and stays on that front foot, is all to play for. Yeah, very much uh, in the ascendancy at the moment is uh, is Terence McIlroy. Harvey though counters. Oh, the table's turning here. We're so close. This is such a close encounter. It really could go either way. Certainly will be decided on the points decision. I'd imagine it's going to be a, a, a split decision here. But you'd never know how the judges are counting. There is a, an electronic scoring system going on tonight, which we don't have access to, so we have to wait like everybody else to find out the winner. This is going to be so tight. Both these men must be pretty tired. Will it be one punch, perhaps? Need to see more punches. Not too many scorers so far in this round. Referee just uh, Paul Rosedale just uh, telling them to keep their heads up. Good angles by Harvey. He's trying to find the gaps in, in McElroy's guard, which is really high, really tight. So he's trying to change the angle, try and find the gaps. Going into the last minute of uh, this contest, and how's this going to shape up? I still really have no idea which way it's going to go. Will there be a telling punch that maybe decides it? Looks unlikely at the moment. Great footwork by Harvey. Yeah. For me, Harvey's just looked rather the more composed of the two, but again... I think in this last round, he's just thrown more shots. I think a lot of them have been defended by McElroy, but I think sheer volume of shots might sway it for him in the last and round. And there's the end of the contest. Both the boxers embrace each other. We await the results of a very, very even contest here at Lightweight, the second bout of the evening here in these Inter-Services Championships. But which way is this going to go? As Glenn Luke comes into the ring to collect the results of the judges all round the ring here. I wouldn't like to call this, Lucy, I really wouldn't. <laughs> Applause from both boxers for the support they've had tonight. It means an awful lot to them. Great respect for both they have for each other, and quite rightly so. And the winner of bout number two, by unanimous decision, in the right Well. Obviously, uh, what you said, Lucy, was quite right. He threw the most punches. They were the most telling, I guess. And uh, in the end, he's got the uh, the title. And that puts the army one up this evening in this inter-services. But it was pretty close. It was close. It was good performance by both boxers. I think McElroy in the end, great defence. Um, not many scoring shots to his credit, but I think he just perhaps didn't throw quite enough shots. But uh, lessons learned and congratulations uh, to Lewis Harvey on a great performance. Yeah, it was. OK, I shall head over there and we'll see if we can get a chat with both of them.
and the winner of bout number two and the inter-service lightweight boxing champion is Clement Lewis Harvey representing the army! Okay, guys, it's a very quick chat with both of you, and congratulations on both of you. Uh, Lewis, congratulations on the win. Yeah, um, good kid, man. You know, um, you know, you just got to adapt to who's in front of you, I guess, man, and he's a strong kid, so, you know, I only done my best, and my best was enough today, but fair play to him, that's... He's a real good boxer, fair play to him, man. It was Terence, I'm sure you'll be back for another go. But... Yeah, next year, yeah, looking at doing another season next year. It's his first time boxing in the elite. It's just... I felt the difference was like he boxed at that high level. Like last year in the ABA, he's got to quarter finals and stuff. But that was just the difference with that little bit of experience and bring awareness and craftiness, just thingy old sport. But I caught him with a good right hand in the first. I just didn't fucking leave, carry up on it. Well, you've both done really well tonight, guys. Congratulations. Lewis, you're the winner. Well done. Yeah, Congratulations. Okay, time for bout number three then in this inter services contest with the army one up after their first run and uh, this time we've got a light welterweight contest uh, between uh, two really high powered guys. We've got Fusley and Rob Jones from one RRF representing the army in the red corner and in the blue corner we've got Ewan Thomas from HM Naval Base in Clyde. Uh, he's representing the Royal Navy tonight and uh, he's got 14 bouts to his name, seven wins and seven losses. So he'll be, again, very keen to pull things back and make it 1-1 in this evening's contest. But uh, I think, Lucy, we can expect a, another really tight show tonight between these two. Yeah, two really capable boxers, really experienced boxers, um, both full-time training athletes, as they all are here. Uh, and so we're going to see some quality boxing, no doubt, now. So both men then into the ring here and getting ready for what we hope will be another really close contest. Just looking at uh, Rob Jones from the Royal Regiment of Fusiliers. Comes from Soli Hull in the West Midlands and his greatest achievement, he says, is being the... West Midlands champion, or the Midlands champion, I should say. Number three is a 63 kilogram light welterweight contest between, in the red corner, representing the army, Fusilier Rob Jones. <laughs> and in the blue corner, representing the Royal Navy, ETWE, Ewan Thomas! So Thomas. And, Thomas. and Jones just getting their instructions from Stu Mack in for his second uh, contest of the evening as a referee. And away we go with the first round. I'm expecting fireworks here, Lucy. Absolutely no messing about from the front <laughs> for the first bell. <laughs> Straight in there. And the referee just having a quick word with uh, with Jones there to make sure that uh, his fighting is legal, his punches are legal, but uh, it's uh, 
Thomas has gone off like a a bit of a runaway train here, both of them. Asked what his uh, greatest achievement was, actually, uh, Ewan Thomas says, escaping Wales, that's a bit unfair. Uh, I don't think he really meant that, so... Uh, uh, he's obviously enjoying life down here, or up in Scotland at the moment, uh, and he's from Pontypool, so you can have words with him next time he's home. <laughs> James clearly has the uh, the height advantage here, and Thomas yeah. is uh, absolutely doing what he should be doing and, and taking the fight to him, closing that space down, not allowing him to use his range. Uh, Thomas not messing around here. Really going in at, uh, I say, a, like a, a railway train at the moment. And again, not afraid to really get himself in there. The Navy could really do with this for their points victory tonight, but the Army, remember, they've got two walkovers, so they've got two in the bag already. But that's not going to stop either of these gentlemen. Oh, that's a really good one. A great punch there from Thomas. Really caught to his opponent. Full in the face there. That will have impressed the judges, I'm sure. Referee just separating them as they start all over again. Jones in the red, Thomas in the white, in the blue corner. Really great support for him, getting right behind him. Thomas just needs to watch his head there. He is the shorter boxer. It's sometimes quite difficult not to get your head over yeah. the front foot there, but he just needs to be careful that he doesn't get a warning from the referee. He's certainly working hard. Stu Max just pointing to the ears, so I'm not quite sure what that was all about. But, uh, I just want the boxers to listen to his yeah, instructions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> nice combination from Jones. Experienced man is, uh, is Rob Jones from the Fusiliers in the first Fusiliers, Midland champion. And he's got his man on the ropes at the moment, which is where he wants him in these last moments of the first round. Well, again, it's a close call, but I think maybe, you know... I'd say Thomas, I think. You'd say uh, Thomas, yeah, round. I think he... He was just really tenacious, wasn't he? He finished the exchanges. Uh, he did absolutely what he had to do. Um, Jones had nice high guard, but actually his elbows were quite splayed, so there's plenty of room down, down the bottom. So he threw shots to the body to get his feet in, finished off to the head with some convincing shots. So I think it was Thomas Round. OK, Lucy, you've marked your card there for us. <laughs> Whether the judges agree with you, of course, is just another matter, and this is all pure conjecture. We don't have any electronic scoring in front of us, so... We can't give you any sort of accurate indication, but... Kevin Kirkham, MBE, says Lewis Harvey, well boxed tonight, good use of the angles. And Kevin also saying good luck to all the boxers, coaches and officials. And I'm sure we would uh, echo what you're saying there, Kevin. Good evening to you. And wherever you are around our forces world tonight, you are more than welcome to our live coverage here from the 2023 Inter-Services Championships. Coming to you live from HMS Drake here in Plymouth and Devonport Dockyard. But good combinations there from Thomas starting off as he means to go on in the second round. Jones having to just fight him off. Certainly the more aggressive of the two is the Welshman. But good countering from Jones. IQ there from, from Thomas, he's tying uh, Jones up, he's not allowing him to work, as soon as they get close there's a little bit of cheeky holding going on the blind side of the referee, so he's he's, uh, he's using his skills and his experience he's well there. He what, knows what he's doing, that's true. In his 15th bout this evening he knows what he's he knows his way around the ring he'd love an 8th victory but so would Jones to really put the army in the box seat in terms of the team championship. Again, Jones just needs to lead off.
off with a shot. He needs to take that sort of pro jab, little half step back as Thomas comes in. Perhaps a little cheeky uppercut as his head is quite low. Just needs to lead off, take charge of that, uh, take charge of that bout. All got a bit scrappy just at the moment. There's both of these men just looking to make the space to get their scoring punches in. Stu Mack just uh, separating them again. Thomas comes forward. Both just looking a wee bit tired in these latter stages of round two. Giving it absolutely 100%. So much at stake here in these championships tonight. Just taking a quick breather. Bit of a mark, to see a bit of a mark on uh, Thomas's face. Is that the signs of a cut, perhaps? I think probably a result of uh, rolling the heads in just a little bit. Yeah. It's really hard for Jones to... Uh, make any sort of headway but he's now in the ascendancy just pushing forward on his opponent just looking at the referee and thinking look there's not a lot i can do here because i'm at the moment i've got i've got to thomas's face in my face in my referee's just having another word with thomas but again his head goes right down doesn't it it's going he to count needs to be careful, him. yeah, he needs to be careful, first of all, um, so that he doesn't get a warning from the referee and get a point taken off, but, but secondly, he just needs to watch his head. Yeah, well, I'd probably give that one to, uh, to Rob Jones there. Just uh, getting some real instructions from his corner at the moment. This fight, a bit yet to take off, isn't it, in a way, Lucy? It's, you know... Well, well, I think it was a very different, two very different rounds there. We had a, quite a scrappy second round where, a quite, where we had a quite busy first round. So I think, uh, you know, in all honesty, Thomas has done what he needs to do. He needs to take the space away from Jones so that he can't use his range. And Jones needs to do the opposite, keep it nice and long and move his angles, change his angles and not allow uh, Thomas to get inside him. He does as we prepare then for the third and final round of this light welterweight contest. 63.5 kilos, both of these men. And so much to play for. We reckon one round each so far, but uh, that's just on our amateur scoring book that we have here, or notes. Straight away, Thomas launching into his opponent, getting really low again. The referee just taking him away and just saying, look, stop going down so low. This time, Jones has got his arm around his opponent, just trying to keep him at bay. And again, Thomas just going in really low, and it's making life pretty difficult for, for Jones. How low he is. I'm so really surprised the referee hasn't stepped in and, and actually you know, brought this to a, some sort of conclusion. Very frustrating, isn't it, for the man in the red uh, the red vest? It's huge. There's, n there's nothing worse than someone who just won't get out of your face, who won't let you work, who won't enable you to throw your own shots. But actually, you know, it's a good tactical approach by Thomas. Listen to me, says Stu Mack. Listen to me. Right over the top. I think Jones is just about pulling away with this. Looks to me like uh, Thomas might just be tiring. Right on the ropes at the moment, both are men, it's a bit of a maul, isn't it? Not many scoring shots going on uh, in the latter half of this round. But you can see there's a clear mark on uh, Ewan Thomas's face. It's a tough battle out there between these two. And there's no shortage of aggression from you and Thomas. You've got to hand that to him. He's the man who's really going for it every time. He does stick his head down a bit low, though. A couple of jabs coming in from Jones. Holding still going on.
go again, the arm round the head of Jones from Thomas, stopping him in his tracks. And again, he's doing it. Look at that, he's got his arm round him. And Jones is really trying so hard. It's You can see the frustration on his face. He's not being really uh, allowed to work. You know. And I think the referee has had enough of this. He's now giving him a warning uh, for, for holding. It's maybe Thomas's only option. Again, you can see him holding. And that's it. That's the end of the contest. Well, I think Jones has done enough there, Lucy. Simply because I think Thomas ran out of steam and he was just holding on. I don't know. I think the point may have uh, may have edged it uh, for Jones. I just don't think he was able to land very many scoring shots. And I think that perhaps Thomas in the early part of each of those rounds maybe landed more scoring shots, but we'll see. We will. That warning will not have helped him, though, will it? No, certainly not. Yeah, it's a good contest, though, nevertheless. I mean, both of these men, you know, giving it their all. And a bit of frustration on the face of, of Rob Jones. But what does the view from the judges come to? We're about to find out. Lynn Luke just now receiving all the information, and here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of bout number three by unanimous decision in the red corner. So it is Jones's, but I suspect there were very few scoring punches in that bout. We'll see what uh, both of them have to say, but uh, I'm sure Jones will be pretty happy, you know, given the fact that he was a bit frustrated. Boxers going up then to receive their trophies. We will follow them very shortly and get a grab a quick word of them. And we're just over halfway through this first half in the 2023 the services. Boxing Association, Wing Commander Carl Roddy. The runner up for bout number three is ETWE, Ewan Thomas. Gentlemen, again, congratulations on a, a really good contest. It was it was tough going for both of you out there. Let me come to you first, you and he's a good man, isn't he? Yeah, very good man. Uh, brilliant boxer as well. Uh, knew how to bring the fight to him uh, as a less experienced man in the ring. So I tried my best to bring it to him, but uh, better man won. Well, Rob, just getting it there in the end. A bit frustrating at times because the referee had to sort of yeah, call things occasionally. So it wasn't you weren't able to sort of you know pull out a huge amount of scoring punches there, but you did enough. That's it. I were allowed to like get, let my boxing go straight shots, but tough lad. Yeah, he was holding quite a bit, ended up scrappy, but got the decision in the end, so I'm more than happy. Yeah, and yeah. you'll be back, won't you? Oh yeah, definitely be back. Yeah. Okay, well done, guys. Thank you. Thank you.
go then with our next round of uh, boxing here at the end of services. And we now have a welterweight contest. This is bout number four of the evening. And uh, again, it's a much look forward to bout here. I always love welterweight contests, Lucy. They always seem to produce some of the best contests of the night. Don't know why that is, but you know, there we go. And for the army, we've got uh, Private Jordan Shaw from the Irish Guards. One Irish Guards tonight. The Adjutant General's score, of course. And he is up against a Royal Air Force man this evening. This is the only RAF man competing this evening. It's the Air Specialist One, Taylor Andrews, from RAF Leeming. So, big night for the RAF. This is their big one, isn't it? Their big opportunity to really make their mark on this championship. They'll want this belt. They'll want to win this belt, undoubtedly. So, both boxers just getting themselves ready, getting themselves sorted. And uh, interesting that uh, Andrews, he's, uh, he's uh, was the Haringey Box Cup champion back in 2017, so he knows his way around the ring. He's been around for a while, and Haringey is a pretty prestigious competition to win. Presenting the army, Private Jordan Shaw. Yeah, Shaw. National semi finalist. He's from uh, Birmingham. Corner, representing the Royal Air Force, AS1, Taylor Andrew. Yeah, Taylor Andrew. Big, big experience man. 41 bouts to his name. He's won 29 of them. And so he will fancy his chances tonight against a, pro probably a less experienced uh, opponent. But uh, Jordan Shaw, I think he knows his way around this ring pretty well too. And I'm looking forward to a great contest. And straight away, these two setting about each other. Andrew based at uh, RF Leeming up there in North Yorkshire. But he comes from Bristol, so he's not too far away from uh, where we are in the West Country. Andrew, so proudly the only RAF boxer tonight. The referee is Paul Rose. Sorry, the referee um, for this is uh, Mike Noble, and uh, he is uh, the Royal Navy referee, of course. And uh, that's why we've got a, an even number of referees. Obviously, this is uh, Mike's only opportunity, I think, to referee tonight, being Royal Navy. Even early moments in this. Not too much to call between the two of them, but very quick round the ring, aren't they, Lucy? Great footwork from both boxers. Um, Jordan Shaw just taking that front foot in the majority of this round. Again, Southport versus Orthodox. Always tricky with the front foot, always trying to, to maximise the, the or find the gaps. He has got a slight reach advantage too, I think. Kai Andrews says, yes, Rob, I imagine uh, a relation there of some sort. Good evening to you, Kai. And best of luck to Jordan Shaw from all of us at Small Heath Amateur Boxing Club, says Michael Maguire. I'm sure I've seen Jordan competing uh, at a Christmas event down in, uh, in Hereford. Uh, a few years ago for the uh, there's a big charity event down there I'm sure I've seen uh, Jordan competing down there but anyway uh, he's uh, made a good start both boxers made a lively start to this not too many scoring punches yet so far Lucy no it's really cage about actually both landing an equal number I would say up until this point Big support for Jordan Shaw from the army contingent here of supporters. Andrews going in there, gets a left and a right combination. Useful, pu useful punches. Good use of the triple jab with the rear hand on top. Back comes Jordan Shaw. The Irish guardsman. And he, he got one through there, didn't he? Just a right, just a right jab. 
End of the first round. Pretty tight. Yeah, I think it's uh, not much in it, but I think Jordan Shaw has just nicked it uh, with a couple of those scoring shots towards the end of that round. Yeah, there were just uh, really good punches towards the end there, and uh, that will certainly uh, please his corner as they, uh, as Shane and the gang, just to uh, give him his instructions at the end of that first round. Doesn't look to phased at all by this uh, this ring. Clearly, the more inexperienced man. Taylor Andrews knows what he's up against now. First rounds are always important, aren't they, when it's a close contest like this? You've got to build your confidence. You've got to get into the round. You need to dominate. You know, you need to put your, um, you know, put your foot down and, and let them know that you're there to start with, and um, and and of course get the judges' attention uh, for the remaining bout. Big support from Trish Shaw. Come on, George. Watching this evening. Good evening to you, Trish, or Tisha, I should say. Good evening to you. Great to get your feedback from wherever you are around the forces world as we move into the second round of this contest here, round or the fourth contest of tonight's nine bouts bill in this inter-services championship. Remember, we've got a couple of walkovers which have gone in the Army's favour, and with the Army already having won two tonight, this win, if it's a win for Jordan Shaw, could win the title for the Army. But a long way to go in this. Just one came in a bit late then from Shaw. Referee just having a word with him. Taylor Andrews, really important for him if he can claw his way into this fight. But Shaw just looking a bit better. Yeah, a positive start from Shaw. Some really eye-catching shots already in this round. Referee having a quiet word again. Just with Shaw telling him just not to... Go too low with the punches. Doesn't need to. Rather throwing them. Good little combination there from Andrews. Shaw fights back. Nice little jinking and joking from the, the tour of the two. Andrew then getting a couple in the left and a right. And again, he goes for the, the right hook this time. That's definitely a scoring punch from him. This is better. He needs to up the pace. He needs to sort of close left, down Jordan Shaw. Bit of left jab getting through. And again, a left and a right from Andrews. Shaw just on the defensive slightly at the moment. Another one to the head from Andrew. This is definitely a better round for, for Andrew here. Taylor Andrew fighting his way back into this contest. The experience really just beginning to come home. The Haringey Box Cup champion back in 2017. Left and a right, pushing his man into the defensive. Hopefully he's not blowing himself out. He seems like he's having a little bit of a rest now, Andrews, but he needs to keep that pressure on if he's gonna if he's gonna nick this round, I think. Well Shaw sure will come back at him, there's no doubt about that. He knows his man, he knows he's got the measure of him. Just a warning about the, going to the back of the head. And that was a good one from Shaw then. He got one through. And again. Oh, and he misses with the, with the right hook. Yeah, and again, Andrew, this is a really good second round. I think this is the best round of boxing we've seen so far, Lucy, in the contest. Yeah, he's just got to keep the pressure on constantly. John Shaw is content if he can set it as his own, at end his own first tempo. Round, end of that second round, rather. I think we'll just give that to Andrew, shall we? Taylor Andrews. I think he finished the round well, and um, you know, it should go, should go to him and according to the rules. Yep, well, we will see. We'll see what the, the judges make of it, but uh, I, I told you that uh, welterweight boxing is something that uh, always seems to produce the goods, and that is certainly in my view the best uh, second round we've had so far in, the, in this inter-services certainly both were allowed to box uh, there were some really great angles great head movement lots of phases lots of shots yeah excellent boxing so the last opportunity then for the uh, the corners to have their say it'll be down to the two men to produce the goods in this final round 
of this welterweight contest. Pretty even so far. I reckon that second round went to Andrews and the Royal Air Force, and the third round possibly going to Jordan Shaw. Let's see how this third one develops. And straight away, Andrews going for it. Some good scoring punches. And again, a right and a left. And to the body. Army, so Army corner just getting a little bit worried here, I think. Because exactly Andrew, really Andrew really has started on the front foot, Lucy. He needs to do this. He needs to take the space away. Uh, Jordan Shaw is quite happy when he dictates the pace and the tempo, but actually when his pressure is on him, he does tend to step back. So it's exactly what Andrews needs to do. Good, uh, good tactics. So an experienced man. 41 bouts to his name and 12 of those only losses, 29 wins. Will he make it 30 wins on the night? Oh, and that was a good one as well from Andrews. Just sent Shaw back on his heel a little bit. What can Jordan Shaw do here? What can the army man do? Is this slipping away from him? Can he work his way back into it? It's a really good performance from both men. To Andrews gets another left and a right. Getting through the short defence. Got one through there, did short. Scoring punch back. He's fighting back in this. Jordan Shaw can afford to keep the sands quite as low, you know, Andrews is really dangerous on that counter. And Andrews very much on the, the front foot here. Into the last minute of this contest. Really crucial last few seconds for the course of this Inter-Services Championship. Andrews is going to take this bout. He's got to start roughing him up now. He's got to edge on that front foot. He's got to take the space away from him. Oh, Ooh, there we go. And that was a terrific punch there from Andrews. Got the left up, and the referee is just uh, bringing them forward. Sure, the, more, the, the less experienced Andrews showing all his experience here. And again, goes in. Great footwork. It was neat footwork from uh, Shaw to get out of the way. Last few seconds then of this welterweight contest. Shaw really going for it, trying to get some scoring punches in. Might be too late. It's all over. Well, I would give that to Taylor Andrews. Uh, Lucy, you're agreeing. I agree. I think uh, he, he, he won the last two rounds, a uh, work rate in the first half of that round, and then it was pretty even after that. And this is really important uh, for both of these uh, competitors, and important for the Royal Navy too, because uh, a win for Jordan Shaw, and the title is back with the Army again already, as they've already had two wins tonight. They've got two walkovers. That would give them the five points they need. But a win for Taylor Andrews and the Navy will still be in with a chance. And as we well know, here we go. Yeah, it's a terrific contest. the winner of bout number four by unanimous decision in the red corner well there we go what do we know John that's why we're not judges <laughs> I'm uh, quite surprised by that I'm quite surprised it was a unanimous victory you know it could have been very close clearly it was a unanimous points victory for Jordan Shaw, the army delighted, of course, with that. And huge disappointment for uh, for Taylor Andrews there. He was... ...by the chairman of the Royal Marines from 
Boxing Association. There we are. Major Tommy McPhee, <laughs> Wolverines. We'll hear what both of the boxers have to say in just a few moments' time. For round number four is Ace Hood, Taylor, Andrew, Royal Congratulations, that was a tough one. Yeah, thank you very much. It was a tough fight. Uh, I fought Taylor Andrews uh, last year as well. Uh, this year he come back stronger, he come back better, and he, he really pushed me to perform today. He really did. Let, Taylor, let's bring you in here just a bit closer. That was a, that was a close one. I know it was a unanimous victory for, for Jordan here, and then, but you yeah. pushed him all the way. Yeah, well, obviously from last year, much better fight for the both of us. I feel I did better than last year, pushed him further, but Better, night on the ma better man on the night again, so got to give it to him, but it was a really tough fight. I think everyone enjoyed it. He's on the Air Force proud tonight. Thank you very much. And Jordan, uh, that victory, I think, gives the Army the title, so, you know, that, that's a double celebration for you. That's brilliant. I wasn't aware of that, but regardless, this is the showpiece event for any of the services, and the novelty of winning one of these will never, will never go, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter how many times we fight, I still love to win this bout. Uh, and to know that I've, won, I've done the winning fight for the Army just means that much more to me. And, you know, I think we've got a really strong squad this year, and the coaches have been brilliant, and they've helped us develop. And we're looking the best with the as well, so I'm just grateful for what I've got around me. And for the support of the guys here, from different units all across the Army here to support every one of us, shouting our names like they know us. So I really appreciate that. So well, well, thank you. Well done, both of you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Well done, thank you. I'm not surprised that Jordan had plenty to say for himself, Lucy, because uh, he is fiercely proud of that uh, of that win. And uh, and Taylor Andrew as well put up a terrific performance, particularly in that second round. But we are ready and waiting for the next bout, uh, which is bout number five. This is the last one before the 20-minute uh, interval. And it's a light middleweight contest this evening between James McCall of the British Army and he's taking on Lucas France uh, from the Commando Logistic Regiment 4-2 Commando so this is a Royal Marine in action uh, against uh, a Lance Corporal from 30 Signal Regiment so light middleweight has all the promise of lots of fireworks this has a great uh, combination of speed and power it certainly is and I think uh, I say, I think we're, we're, we're due a few fireworks in this one. And uh, Paul Rosedale is going to be your referee. James, who's from Aberdeen. And in the blue corner, representing the Royal Navy, Marine Lucas! And he's from Hull, is Lucas France from 4-2 Commando, the Commando Logistic Regiment as well. 
and he says his greatest achievement is development championships runner-up whereas James well greatest achievement for him army elite champion so he has an army title to his name already gosh I'm looking forward to this one We've already come to see in the uh, these boxing bouts so far. Everyone off to a, a flying start here. Another Southport Orthodox affair. Both men with a good reach. Nicely, nice one there from McCool. Just got the little left in, little left jab to the head. What can the Marine do to stem the flow? Because it's been all red so far in this competition. In the men's title race, the Army have won all the bouts so far tonight. That's a nice little combination from France there. And the cool counters. Body punching from the Marine. McCall's doing everything he needs to do with those long arms, and again, he's got the height advantage. Uh, it just needs, he's keeping it, him at range, little half step back. Um, everything he needs to do, I think Lucas France just needs to move around to his right a little bit more as a southpaw just to make use of that sort of lead hook and the rear hand to the body. Yeah, and McCool playing this pretty cool, isn't he, so far? Sorry to throw the pun in there, but, uh, yeah, he's being very intelligent the way he's fight, the way he's doing this. He's just, you know, using, as you say, his, his reach advantage and just striking when he needs to. But France, a mean customer. just pulling them back that's Paul Rosedale who's looking after this one it's a little jab there from McCool from the soldier Marine hits back everyone on their feet here particularly at the back the army supporters really getting behind their man from the back the end of that first round well that was pretty tight. Yeah, I think McCall has, uh, has taken that round purely on those straight rear hands and keeping it nice and long. Yeah, intelligent uh, boxing there from uh, the Aberdeen man with a name like uh, James McCall. Not surprised he's from north of the border. <laughs> Just uh, getting his instructions at the moment. As is Lucas France. Based at 4 2 Commando. And uh, latterly, I think, of the Commando Logistic Regiment just down the road from here, down at Barnstable, at Chivener. Got development championships runner up with 20 bouts to his name, but he's won 16 of them, only four defeats. So Lucas France knows his way around this ring. Will he up his game in the, the second round? We will see. As the bell sounds, away we go. Very quickly, referee. It was just a little clash of heads towards the end of that round, yeah. and I think he's just having the doctor look at his eye. Yes, he has taken a, a bit of a bash to the eye. Doctor taking a look. And he gives him the clear, the OK. But we'll be keeping a very close eye on that, uh, on that right eye. And no doubt Lucas France has, uh, has seen that opportunity. 
and he'll try and work on that. As he does already, he gets one, a left, a left uh, jab in. This is a, a frenetic start then to this second round. Lucas just staying inside line of attack a little bit too much for me, so his head's staying in the middle. He needs to move the head off. There we go, to, to the right-hand side and step right and throw. There we go, good. Lucy giving us her expert inside knowledge and, you know, referee just checking, making sure it's not the back of the head. McCall must be slightly worried about that uh, little nick on his eye. France gets a, a left and then a right. Someone once told me, Lucy, an old boss of mine, dear old friend of mine, told me that uh, the art of boxing is actually how to avoid a punch rather than throwing one. Yeah, most definitely. Anybody <laughs> can throw a punch. It's the not getting punched that's the, the difficult bit. And so far tonight, we're, we're certainly seeing this from uh, these two men. This is a better round from France. It he's is. picked up the pace. He's finding yeah. those angles much better. And he's throwing that rear hand a lot more, and it's landing. Yeah. And there's some scoring punches going in here from the Royal Marine. As he goes again. He gave that first round to uh, to McCall. McCall. The second round seems to be going in the direction of the man from the senior service. But, as we've already seen tonight, what we think might not matter at all. Oh, that's a good one. A good... A little jab there to the, the head from France. few moments of this uh, second round and I think it's certainly belonged to the man in the uh, the blue corner here the Navy supporters really getting behind their man great atmosphere inside the uh, senior rates mess here on Devonport Dockyard end of the round and a bit of work to be done, I think, on uh, on James McCall from his corner there, just taking a look at his eye and just uh, keeping him absolutely focused. I'm sure that the blue corner is probably the happiest of the two at this uh, at this interval. <laughs> okay, what was that all about then? <laughs> Sean Martin won't be very pleased with that. <laughs> yeah, Martin instead. I think he's actually just uh, not done a bit more damage, hasn't he? <laughs> and while we're focusing really on the blue corner here, Martin, Martin, Martin's not done too, not done too well there. Anyway, we'll we'll draw a veil over that, shall we? <laughs> and we go into this final round then with everything to play for here. Lucas France in the Royal Marines against James McCall from the British Army. Two minutes for one of these men to make their mark. I think France thought that there was an illegal punch went in there. He just stopped for a moment. McCall comes back at him. He's just got to keep that space. He's just got to keep that pressure on the front foot. Move a little bit off to the right because he's, he's walking onto the backhand of McCall. So uh, McCall's doing absolutely the right thing here. Yeah, McCall got a, got a scoring punch in there, definitely, with the right. Comes back. France comes back with another one from McCall, definitely scoring there. And this is a really even start to this final round. Brilliant support all around the ring here for both of these men. 
what an atmosphere we've got. Yeah, fantastic contest. This light middleweight contest, remember. Both men scoring with punches there, giving it absolutely everything, fighting themselves to a standstill almost. These are two men that want to win this title. Yeah. And he's still up for grabs here. You've got to hand it to James McCauley. He's got that slight cut to his right eye, but it's not affected him at all. He's such bravery from both of these men. Really terrific end to this contest. Again, McCall gets in there. France coming back at him with a left and a right. Into the last moments then. Who is going to take this title? Who is going to take this light middleweight 71 kilogram title? Could go either way. Last 10 seconds. Absolute on a knife edge here. Both of these men almost got it to a standstill. What a terrific contest. Brilliant fight. Absolutely brilliant display of boxing. All heart, all courage, great technique. But a little bit too tight for me to call, John. Well, I'm going to give the second round to Lucas France, but that third round, well, as you say, could go absolutely in any way. Both men, absolutely terrific uh, boxing there. Such high quality. really to be fair very tight contest yep. testament to both boxers skill bravery fitness great belt really terrific stuff and uh, a fitting way to end this first half of the competition we'll be talking to both boxers very shortly and then we'll be taking a short break after that and uh, among the things we'll be looking at in amongst forces sport is looking ahead to a very busy weekend of a busy week next week of winter sports out there on the slopes of Maribel. But let's uh, head over now to talk to the uh, two boxers after the presentations. That will be very short. The runner-up for bat number five is Marine Lucas France.
Thank you. Put your belt on, James. Okay. Well, James, you got that belt on. Congratulations. That was one heck of a fight. Yeah, uh, that was. I'm not going to go far say so underestimate my opponent, but he took a fight to me that I don't know. I, I couldn't believe that he's. The guy I'm in there, and I, I don't even know his name properly, but I've got so much respect for him. He's a hell of a fighter. Um, I'm just glad that the judge has seen it, and I'm now the United Kingdom Armed Forces light middleweight champion. Yeah, congratulations. Let's bring Lucas in as well. It takes two great fighters to make a, a great fight, uh, and you certainly did that tonight, Lucas. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I've just come straight off the development championships. This is my um, second elite match, so my first time doing my second time doing three minutes. Um, so I'm quite happy with my performance. Um, great opponent, very tricky. I enjoy that game of chess. He's a, he's a long, long opponent, fast. Um, so I take from that is go back to the locker room, readjust. Um, opponent styles, this opponent in particular, and then work out how to um, beat opponents like that. Yeah. But yeah, class. Yeah, very good, mate. Yeah. Well done, mate. Well done, guys. I mean, you, you say it was a game of chess, it was certainly that, but uh, I mean, it was so difficult to call, and it was a, a split decision, yeah. so it really could have gone either way. So it, it's with split decisions, you never know because that doubt will always keep in your mind, but you've also battled with that confidence. I think I have got this, I have scored that last shot, and I'm sure Lucas was feeling the same. If it went the other way, I wouldn't have had a problem. I believe, honestly believe it was that close. It is what it is, but I'll say it once and say it again. Well done, Lucas France. Yeah. Hell of a boxer, he's going far. Absolutely. Cheers, guys. Absolutely Thanks. magnificent. Cheers. And just come and talk to us in the way you have after such a bruising contest there. Congratulations well, and best wishes to both of you. Fits a fight. You've got to be able to do this afterwards yeah, as well, yeah? It certainly is. <laughs> Absolutely magnificent. Well done. Thank You'll you treasure much. that belt, won't you? Thank you very much. Okay. Hello. And one for you too. Well done, Lucas. Thanks. Thank you. And that's what I call mutual respect from both the boxers. In fact, it's the mutual respect that we're seeing throughout the whole of the evening here uh, in these inter-services finals. We've got five, we've got four more bouts for you to come after the break. OK, we're going to take a, a short break here uh, at, uh, down in, uh, in Plymouth for now. And we're going to tell you, first of all, in a busy week, a busy period for a force of sport, all about an exciting week coming up in Maribel. fantastic times and what this means to me after being involved in the sport for the past eight nine years is just I can't put it into words I'm absolutely over the moon I'm glad it comes to a race day that's all we can expect we've just decided an Eagles which is a nice track it's good for learning but it's more challenging compared to Lady Hammer so there's been a lot of spills over the past couple of weeks and really tested people mentally and physically so we've got three new sliders here this week we've got they're new to sliding this season, they're not new to sliding this week. Um, hopefully they'll come back in the future. Two of them are on the army team and have slid brilliantly. It has been a great day for the Irish. Yeah, the girls have done really well. We've grouped together, stayed together to make us come out on top. And uh, there's such a tradition of skeleton in the in the Air Force, you know, 17 years now the men yeah. have been successful. You're, you're following hard on the heels, I think. Yeah, this is our second year now, winning. The feeling never changes, the adrenaline never goes. I've done it for seven years, so, and it still feels the same at the top as it always has done. We brought out a fairly novice uh, team here, male and female, and um, yeah, probably the hardest we've had to work as a team for quite some time, but everyone dug deep, staff including to put together a solid male and female race team and yes yeah, it's, it's great a great feeling to pull it off as a team with the guys and also see the, the ladies do the same thing. 17 successive years now for our yeah, yeah, yeah and this was this one felt touch and go but we, everyone really st stood up on race day and I managed to bring home the win. I mean, the, 
stress I was feeling at the top, I knew that I was ahead, but anything can happen. One slight change in the run, you know, anything can happen at any point. So, yeah, it was it was good when I got into six, Ben 16. I knew that I was there no matter what happened at that point. They were free, so. But yeah, just super proud of me and Em. Come here. Yeah, so Em's first time doing bobsleigh, and here she is, fastest break woman as well. Absolutely. So super proud of her. Fantastic, a brilliant way to finish the, the, the three weeks out here. Um, very proud of the guys, how they come up from novices to where we are now. Um, fantastic race against the Army, so we've got the Army, the RF and the Navy and the Marines. Um, but no, it's, it's been re really good camp, really good good services. Um, just looking forward to it next year now. Really, really good. Hello and welcome to Courses Sport. You've been doing all right with the tries, haven't you, yeah, last yeah. couple of seasons? Not bad. Yeah. Amy Kikade, um, as always, a real pleasure. Ah! Hi, I'm Simon Hunter, and this is In Case You Missed It. In Rugby Union, the Royal Engineers have retained their Army Intercorps title. The Sappers mastered the tricky conditions best to comfortably beat the Royal Logistic Corps in Aldershot. 27-7 was the final score. But the logisticians did enjoy some success in final stay by lifting the women's title. The snow and sleet made for a low-scoring game as they edged past the composite side of the Royal Artillery and Army Air Corps. It finished 10-6 to the Royal Logistic Corps. RAF player Karis Williams-Morris has been selected for the Welsh squad for the women's Six Nations. The flying officer, who also plays for Loughborough Lightning, is in the 36-strong squad for the game against Ireland on March the 25th. Her selection comes after she was awarded a full-time player contract by the Welsh Rugby Union. Lance Bombardier Jody Soule has won the Grand Military Gold Cup for a fourth time in his racing career. He was on board Broken Halo at Sandown, the same horse he rode to victory at last month's Royal Artillery Gold Cup. He's now level with Jamie Snowden for the most wins in the event. Next, Captain Cat Matthews is preparing to face her demons as she returns to top-level competitive triathlon. The Army physio has chosen the US Ironman Championships in Texas for her comeback, which will be raced just a mile from the spot where she nearly died last year. She fractured her skull, two vertebrae in her neck and her sternum while on a training ride in October while preparing for the Ironman World Championship.
it's quick, it's exciting. You're always on your toes, you never know what to expect. Expect the unexpected. I don't think anyone realises how fast and furious it is. It's a relentless game, there's nothing else like it. Sharp, snappy, uh, fast-paced, uh, accurate, skillful, lots of tactics. It deserves to be there for all to see. No worries. Didn't, I didn't know that, so that's fine. Well, I didn't either, to be honest. But no, neither I mean, did that I. That kind of makes a bit of sense, I suppose, in case there's any, like... Sorry? Well, welcome back here to uh, the arena here in uh, the... Uh, Mess here at uh, HMS Drake, and uh, I'll tell you what, it's been a, a fabulous uh, first uh, half of boxing here this evening, and uh, hopefully be joined by Brittany Walker very shortly. She's just coming over now uh, to join us. We weren't able to talk to Brittany uh, Hi, yeah, after yeah. that. I'm very well, and I see you're out of your out of your boxing yeah, kit. I've got a little bit dressed up now, so not in that. Um tracksuit. <laughs> now tell me, that was uh, that was quite a, an opening encounter that you had there uh, with uh, with Neve, wasn't it? And uh, you know, she put up a real fight, but you were really, really strong. Oh no, she definitely did. I mean, she's no like she's no like silly girl around the ring. Do you know what I mean? She's the um, just won the development championships for England. You know, um, but obviously we move into elites now, and I had it up against me. You know, I had to like keep my title. Um, and you know, and this is my year. Do you know what I mean? I, I want to win the uh, nationals now in the elites, and well, and still, you know, two times now. So no, I'm really chuffed to bits. But she definitely gave me a good fight. I'm sure you'll be keep a, a close eye in, interest in the, the next fight that we're going to have this evening. That was your opponent last year. Oh yeah. Do you know what? I'm really, I am secretly rooting for Frankie. To be fair, Frankie has actually turned into a really good friend of mine, and. Um, Lily's a really good, strong opponent. Frankie's really good. I think it's going to be an amazing fight, to be fair. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, but, yeah, it should be good. I want to see how she gets on. I want to see how they both get on, to be fair. It's a great night, you know, for Forces Boxing. And, and to be part of it, you must feel really proud. Oh, it's amazing to be part of it. It's, actually, it's like to be one of the boxers. So you always get a little bit nervous about fighting and stuff. But then when you see stuff like this, and I mean, like, the lights going off and the atmosphere, it's just amazing. It really is. It just makes it all worth it all worth getting punched in the face for but it is, it is great it is really great and tell me what what's next for Brittany Walker then uh, so hoping to get me out on the 16th of December um, then it's my birthday on the 17th so I have a little bit of downtime and then yeah first of first of um, April in Barnsley my hometown and hopefully you know start at the pre-quarters and make myself to the semis and hopefully in the finals of the England nationals so yeah. We wish you all the very best thank for that, Brittany, because uh, it's great to see you here tonight, and congratulations on the win. No, we were hoping to get, uh, actually hoping to get Neve over here, but I think she's disappeared, hasn't she, for now? Oh, I'm not too <laughs> sure where she is, but I'm sure you'll find her. We will. Great to talk to you. Brittany Walker, who won the opening uh, contest this evening, and uh, great great news for uh, Navy women's boxing, because, you know, it's uh, it's so important that we, uh, we have... You know, Good performances from the senior service, and you've set the standard tonight. And who knows what we're going to see in the second in the second half tonight? No, thank you very much. No, I wish them all the best, and I'm pretty sure these girls are going to give you a good fight. They're really determined. So, really will, Brittany. Thanks a lot. Thanks thank for your time, much. Brittany Walker. Joining us live here from uh, the mess here at uh, HMS Drake, and let me bring in uh, Lucy. Uh, we've we've already seen the. Uh,
really good bouts tonight, Lucy, and yeah. I have to say I'm, I'm really buzzing about the, the last one. Yeah, what a treat we've had tonight. There have been some really close bouts, there's some real technical bouts, um, and I think we've got some, uh, some more fireworks to come. I mean, really good news. I mean, just sort of looking on the notes here with uh, with Lucas France. I mean, that was a great interview they both did, uh, Lucas and, and James McCall. But uh, Lucas, just given the great news that despite the fact that he lost this evening, he will actually be in a national final because obviously he's Scottish. So, you know, he's got away with uh, a real prize tonight. That's not a bad runner-up prize, is it? I mean, if you can go through to the to the next round of the Scottish Championships, then then you can't be too sad about that. And I think that's really great that we've, we've retained that, that experience, that, that skill in two national championships and nobody's really really lost out there. And apart from Brittany, of course, the army absolutely dominating so far. They are, yeah, it can't be denied. They've won pretty, pretty much everything so far, um, and rightly so. There's been some fantastic uh, skill on display, and I think that they edge it on experience, uh, and I think, to be honest, the Navy and the RAF have been a little bit up against it in that sense. We'll see the Navy and the RAF come through in the future when they gain that experience, but certainly the army have been dominant so far. We've got uh, four big bouts coming to come, though, which I'm really looking forward to. What about you? Well, we always go up the, well, the exception of the, of the ladies' bout, of course, the 57 kilo that we're going to see. Uh, with, with gentlemen, we see them going uh, heavier and heavier, and then we, we see a little bit of drama as uh, the heavier they get. And, of course, we've, you know, we've lost a couple of the fights uh, with, uh, with the walkovers that we'll have uh, at 80 kilos and, and 92 plus kilos. So, uh, obviously, the army are already champions uh, as, as a result of that. Which is a shame, you know, from a from a neutral's point of view. Would have loved to have Ladies gone to the wire, would we? Yeah, minutes. absolutely. It's, it, it's a country, it's a political discussion you. that perhaps shouldn't be had on air. But I think, you know, walkover points are, um, are a real shame because you just don't get to contest them in, in this environment. I think people do miss out on that. Okay. Well, what we're going to do now is we'll. Uh, We'll get back to our seats. Uh, we've got around five minutes to go before we start the uh, the second round of the, the competitions. In fact, if I can just get the uh, the sheets here, we can actually just go through those uh, bouts, can't we, Lucy? And uh, obviously, starting off with with Lily Devlin and the British Army uh, against Frankie Lyle. Uh, Brittany was talking about Frankie there. That's going to that's be a real corker, this, this next fight. Yeah, most certainly will. Frankie Lyle, of course, had a semi-final, and she was very dominant in that. Uh, you know, she, she's tall, she's rangy, which seems to be, be, be the theme tonight, you know. To, but she uses it well now. She uses it well. She keeps it long. She changes the angles, and she boxed very well on Tuesday. So I'm really looking forward to seeing her against an army opponent who's going to be very game. OK, and then, uh, obviously, to follow, uh, Connor Moore uh, from the British Army, uh, and he's taking on Grant Crooks of uh, the Royal Marines. That's going to be a, an interesting battle, and that's coming in at uh, middleweight. Yeah, Crooks, he had a real ding-dong again on Tuesday, so um, he, he will have been very grateful for that day's rest, um, and the Army comes in fresh once again. So we'll see how that goes, but it's going to be... Um, yeah, none of them are going to, going to want to leave anything in the ring. Absolutely not. And uh, just two more to tell you about as well. We've got... Uh, Nick Wright, who's got a big fan club here. You can you actually heard at the, at the beginning of the evening from the army, uh, and he's taking on uh, Joel uh, Hassan from the Royal Navy, from the Royal Marines again, uh, and that's at cruiserweight. They're always rough and tumble. As, uh, <laughs> they are, they are. There is, there's always some excitement at the heavier, uh, for, with the heavier weights. Uh, Joel Hassan again boxed uh, on Tuesday, so he's well into the swing of things. Uh, he had a tough bout, um, so we'll see We'll see what happens uh, tonight. OK, and one final bout for heavyweights. Uh, Jack Hindmarsh, British Army, and he'll be taking on uh, Gabriel uh, Ran Silver. Uh, from the Royal Marines as well. So, again, these are uh, newcomers that maybe we don't know too much about, and that's what makes it all the more exciting. And fascinating at, uh, at heavyweight, because you never know what's <laughs> going to happen anyway. So, uh, yeah, really excited to see the conclusion to tonight. OK. Just a couple of moments to go then. We'll take our seats, and uh, we'll be rejoining the action very, very shortly.
guys today. Everyone's put down some really, really good, fantastic times. And what this means to me after being involved in the sport for the past eight, nine years is just, I can't put it into words. I'm absolutely over the moon. I'm glad it comes to before race day. That's all we can expect. We're used to signing an Eagles, which is a nice track. It's good for learning, but it's more challenging coming here to Lily Hammer. So it's been a lot of spills over the past couple of weeks and really tested people mentally and physically. So we've got three new sliders here this week. We've got they're new to sliding this season, they're not new to sliding this week. Um, hopefully they'll come back in the future. Two of them are on the army team and have slid brilliantly. It has been a great day for the RF. Yeah, the girls have done really well. We've grouped together, stayed together to make us come out on top. And uh, there's such a tradition of skeleton in the in the Air Force, you know, and it's 17 years now, the men yeah. have been successful. You're, you're following hard on the heels, I think. Yeah, this is our second year now, winning. The feeling never changes, the adrenaline never goes. I've done it for seven years, so, and it still feels the same at the top as it always has done. We brought out a fairly novice uh, team here, male and female, and um, yeah, probably the hardest we've had to work as a team for quite some time, but everyone dug deep, staff including to put together a solid male and female race team and yes yeah, it's, it's great a great feeling to pull it off as a team with the guys and also see the, the ladies do the same thing 17 successive years now for our yeah yeah skeleton. and this was this one felt touch and go but we, everyone really st stood up on race day and I managed to bring home the win stress I was feeling at the top, I knew that I was ahead but anything can happen, one slight change in the run, you know, anything can happen at any point, so yeah, it was it was good when I got into six, then 16, I knew that I was there no matter what happened at that point, they were free, so, but yeah, just super proud of me and Em, come here, come here, so Em's first time doing bobsleigh and here she is. Fastest break as well. Absolutely. So super proud of her. Fantastic, brilliant way to finish the, the, the three weeks out here. Um, very proud of the guys, how they come up from novices to where we are now. Um, fantastic the race against the army, so we've got the army, the RF, and the navy, and the marines. Um, but no, it's, it's been re really good camp, really good in services. Um, just looking forward to it next year now. Really, really good. Okay, well, welcome back then to our live coverage of the second half of uh, the 2023 Inter Services Championship. And the first thing to say is really a congratulations to the British Army team on retaining the UK Armed Forces Boxing Association Championship. They've already won the title, but I'll tell you what, we've still got some great boxing ahead of us. So please don't go away because these guys are really going for it. And we've got a, another female contest now as we've been talking about about the second one of the evening. This is a flyweight contest and looking forward very much to seeing the RAS Frankie Lyle back in action again. And she's up against a very, very tricky army opponent in Lily Devlin. And uh, this is gonna be a, a cracking contest. The boxer is just about ready to come out uh, to join us in the ring. And, uh, and Lucy, we know obviously all about Frankie. Uh, not maybe so much about uh, about Miss Devlin because you know she's really not crept under the, the radar, but she's a really tenacious fighter. As I understand it, I've not seen her box. Um, I'm really excited to see she comes with, uh, like you say, she comes with um, a great pedigree. Um, I'm really excited to see this belt. Yeah, Lily Devlin in the red corner from Norwich over there in uh, in wonderful Norfolk with the Royal Logistic Corps with 27 regiments and uh, she weighs in at 57 kilos so this is the featherweight contest the greatest achievement national semi-finalist so she's looking to go even better the, uh, this time around but what can we say about Frankie Lyle from over there in County Durham, but she's based at RAF Digby. I think she's actually a, a linguist, isn't she? Uh, that's the linguist section at uh, 
RF Digby in Lincolnshire, national development semi-finalist in 2021, Haringey Cup silver medalist, Hull Box Cup semi-finalist, Winter Box Cup semi-finalist, uh, silver medalist and Golden Girl silver medalist as well. Those she lists as her greatest achievements and there are a lot of them. <laughs> so we're ready then to go with this. Graham Blick of the Royal Navy who we know very well of course, Graham who organised that magnificent uh, event last year on board HMS Queen Elizabeth in the red corner. and Graham Number is officiating tonight. can really expect some fireworks between these two young ladies, I promise you. The second of our female bouts this evening. Red, Devlin, Blue, Lyle. Julie Hindmarsh says, awesome boxing, up the army, she says. And Gavin Raimondo, Royal Marine win, more aggressive, good fight both. It was a terrific fight. And just in case you missed it, uh, just a really good news from the point of view of... Uh, of Lucas France is that he will be contesting a national final because he'll be competing for Scotland so uh, a great outcome for both of those men but uh, here we go then in the first round of this contest featherweight contest between these two 57 kilos Lily Devlin in the red and uh, Frankie Lyle in the blue corner wearing the light blue vest of the Royal Air Force and straight away, it's uh, Devlin who's uh, grabbed the middle ground. But Lyle, very experienced, 14 wins behind her. Frankie Lyle losing the angles really well there, coming off to the side and coming back in for the second phase. Landing those scoring shots. Lily Devlin at the moment just seems a little bit reluctant to throw the shots, to commit to the shots, but I'm sure she'll get into the flow shortly. Good aggressive play from Devlin in these early moments. So she's grabbed the middle ground here against Frankie Lyle. Just waiting a little bit too long um, and Frankie Lyle just doing what she needs to do she's keeping it long she's making Devlin commit catching her uh, on the counter it's good boxing very tentative in this first round from both of these two Devlin getting a couple of scoring punches in there, Lyle fighting back. That's a good one, a left there from Lyle. Good clean fight so far. Both of these young women really up for this. They had to wait a long time to get into the ring, making the most of it. Heading towards the end of this first round. The Devlin is just really struggling to work out Lyle with the really long arms and the reach. Just doesn't seem to be able to, to close that range down at the moment. <laughs> and all credit to Lyle for keeping her at range, moving those angles. Very good boxing. Yeah, yeah it's a good contest so far. Good, clean stuff. Oh, a couple of scoring punches then from Lyle. Bell goes, end of round one. You'd presumably give that one to Frankie Lyle, then, would yes, you? Yes, I think so. And we heard Brittany Walker talking, because they, as they say, they competed against each other. In fact, they competed twice, didn't they, last year? Because we saw them on HMS Queen Elizabeth, and then obviously in the inter-services last year, and uh, now become great friends, apparently. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Maybe because they're in different weight categories now, they can afford <laughs> Maybe to that's be. it. <laughs> 
No, I've seen a real improvement in Lyle over the over that year. You know, she's really has improved as a boxer. Not that she was, you know, she she needed much improvement, but she's using a lot more angles. She's keeping that range. She's using her uh, advantages really well. So we wait for the second round to commence. Here we go. And Lucy's going to have a few extra duties to do actually over the, uh, towards the end of this because you're going to be presenting the winner with their trophy, aren't you? So that's something to look forward to. <laughs> Here we go then, round two. And uh, straight away Devlin gets on the front foot. But Frankie Lyle just biding her time. Such focus from both of these boxers. Just look at the look at their eyes. Look how focused they are on each other, on their movements. Nice little combination from the RAF boxer. Devlin comes back at her. Great shot by the army. That's good. Good shot by Devlin on the backhand. She needs to do more of that. It'll slips and rolls and come back with a shot. Much better. And again, gets through, gets to the defence. Bit of an arm block going on at the moment. So obviously both of the young women just taking a maybe a, a quick breather, but they're right back at it. Two great shots there by Devon. Yeah. This is better. This She's is now better. slipping the shots. She's coming back with her own shot, throwing more, much better. And Lyle hitting back as well. Didn't like that, I don't think, very much. <laughs> Both of them just composing themselves in the ring. Good support coming for both fighters. Again, nice little combination from the RAF yeah. fighter. Devlin, though, Blocked won't go Devlin. away, will she? Absolutely tenacious. Just looking to bide her time, gets a scoring punch in there. This is really good quality boxing, Lucy. It is now, yeah. Now that Devlin's found her range, she's found a way in and found a way behind that jab um, of Lyle. She's now landed some really eye-catching shots. Two from Devlin. Reply from Lyle. It's really giving it their all in these closing moments of round two. Won't be a lot left in the tank if they carry this on in the third round. And that's the end of a compelling second round there from both of those fighters. Who would you give that one to? Yeah, it was a really competitive round. I think probably Red just edged it on the more eye-catching shots. Which sets us up nicely, of course, for... Uh, the final round and uh, some intense words going on in the blue corner at the moment <coughs> and also in the red corner as well for that matter <laughs> live here at HMS Drake in the senior rates mess turned into a brilliant little boxing uh, hall this evening with a really great atmosphere, this intimate atmosphere that you simply don't get in the large gymnasium with 500 people making a, a real racket and uh, they've got plenty to shout about in this final round as Lyle and Devlin go at it now to decide this featherweight title. Frankie Lyle in the blue, based up at RAF Digbury from County Durham. 
against Lily Devlin from Norwich with the 27 Regiment RLC. Good start by Lyle. She's dominating uh, from the start again. Nice straight shots. But Devlin coming back at her as she has done throughout the whole contest. And again, this is a really, really hard one to call. Devlin just tries to make that scoring punch, doesn't fails. Frankie Lyle focusing hard on her opponent, both of them. A few loose shots going in, trying to make them count. Good angles by Lyle, not allowing Devlin to set her feet, not allowing her to close that space. Red corner encouraging Devlin to push on and to pro those shots. Well, Devlin is keeping her guard at well, though, and it's something maybe Frankie Lyle isn't doing at the moment. I think they're both getting pretty tired out there. Will there be one telling punch? That was a good one from Lyle there. But Devlin, as she has done throughout this fight, coming back every time. Lyle throwing a left and a right. Goodness, oh! Just pulled over onto the floor there. Bit of fatigue, bit of weariness I there, I think. That won't be a count, surely, no. No, not too. Graham Blick just uh, allows them to recompose themselves. That's Frankie Lyle and Lily Devlin. See out these last few moments of what's been a compelling women's bout here at Featherweight. The second and final of the female action this evening in the ring in this Inter-Services Championship. Bit of a scrappy end to this round. It is. Quite difficult <laughs> to see any scoring shots there. Both boxers uh, giving it their all. I think they're both dead on their feet just about. And I'm not surprised because it has been absolutely non-stop, these two. But, uh, Lyle gets, a, gets one in there. And again, and that's a, a, another good right. The jab's going in. Trying to make the most of it. Devlin's got her on the ropes. But it's all over. And my goodness me, that was one heck of a contest, Lucy. Wow. Very difficult to call. I think it was one round apiece going into the last round, and I think I wouldn't like to say, if I'm honest. Really good display. Well, Lucy, you better lose your headphones and your microphone and go over there because you're going over there to present the prize. So, yeah, you've got the nod. We'll see you in a few moments' time. And uh, Lucy O'Connor, she's a busy lady this evening. As I said, she is the first lady of women's forces boxing without any shadow of a doubt. Over there. Hugely respected by everyone Graham. in the ring here and indeed around Over the there. ring for the contribution Facing that she's way. made over the years to, to force his boxing. This way. Both boxers have given their absolute all and made it a terrific contest. Lucy Devlin in the red. Ladies and gentlemen, and put your hands together. Frankie Lyle boxers. in the blue. And they get a very warm reception from the audience here but who's this going to go to and the winner of bout number six by a split points decision in the blue corner so frankie lyle gets the call but it was very, very close. An absolute split decision. She knows she's been in one heck of a contest with Lily Devlin. Terrific stuff and a great advert for women's military boxing in the ring here tonight. Both boxers then going round to receive their trophies. And we'll be talking to Frankie and Lily very, very shortly when they've received their awards. Ladies and gentlemen. The prize for bout number six will be presented by a former international boxer, Lieutenant Commander Lucy O'Connor. Will make a big round of applause. Who will up for bout number six is
ladies, congratulations to both of you on a, a terrific contest. Let me bring you in, Lily, first, because I know you're, you're devastated to have lost. It was a split decision, but it was so close. Yeah, you know, um, we could have done a lot of things different. I, 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 I'm not going to make excuses about a girl one on the day, do you know what I mean? Um, um, obviously, I'm gutted, um, but it is what it is. I'll have to come back stronger. So. I mean, you both gave it your all. Frankie, you were in one heck of a contest there. Yeah, it was really good. She made it hard work for us. Um, she's a tough girl, very fit, kept coming. So I stuck to the game plan, get my shots off and move. And luckily it worked. But all credit to Lily, she boxed brilliantly. Well, you're both a huge credit to uh, women's military boxing tonight. So. Congratulations to both of you, and congratulations to you, Frankie, on that title. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you. Thanks. Well done. So just going through the uh, the other walkovers that have happened this evening, and just to confirm the uh, those walkovers and uh, and victories this evening for on the uh, 80 kilos. And the uh, 92 plus kilos as well. So um, those are the walkovers. And uh, Lily was pretty devastated there, uh, uh, Lucy. I'm not surprised because, you know, it, clearly when it's a split decision like that, it could go either way. Yeah, and it's never easy to, to lose about. Nobody goes in there to lose, do they? Um, but I think, you know, she'll learn a lot from that. She'll come, you know, she's got plenty of technique, plenty of skill. We'll see her again. And I think Frankie knows that she had one heck of a fight there. And uh, great round of applause for you uh, presenting the, that uh, that competition. It was a proud moment for you. It was very, well, very proud moment for my uh, former weight. So it's nice to nice to present the 57 featherweight. Absolutely. So we move on then to our, our next round of boxing. This is now a middleweight contest. It's bout number seven of uh, the nine on the card tonight. And uh, we're talking about uh, Fusilier Moore, Connor Moore. Uh, from the British Army, from again the second from the uh, first Fusiliers in action this evening, and he's in action against a real man from the Royal Navy who's already had a semi final. He's beaten Brad Axe already to get through to this, and that's Grant Crooks, a 4 5 commando Royal Marines. So, again, this is going to be a right old dust stop, this one, I think. Well, Crooks has already got a good scalp there in Brad Axe. What a fantastic boxer, and it really was a good bout, really very close. Um, so, he's got it all to do here tonight. He certainly has. Both men already in the ring and ready for the fray. I say Crooks already been in action here in the ring in the semi-final just 48 hours ago. And we were just wondering how much of a difference that might make to him, uh, whether he's sharper as a result or whether he's obviously struggling a bit, maybe with uh, the 48 hours is not long, is it, between two fights? No, these are fit lads, though. They're used to, uh, they're used to recovering quickly. Bout number seven is a 75 kilogram middleweight contest between, in the red corner, representing the army, Comes out of Peterborough. And in the blue corner, representing the Navy, Marine Grant Crooks! Huge support for Grant Crooks here tonight from 4-5 Commando. Comes from Spennymore. 35 bouts for him. He's won 20 of them and lost 15. So this is going to be one heck of a one heck of an event. Greatest achievement for uh, for Connor Moore, UCAF development champion. So he's stepping up to the senior level tonight. How will he get on against a very experienced man in in Grant Crooks? We will find out. We're underway in the first round. Busy first couple of seconds. 
seconds. Both boxers throwing combinations, not giving anybody or each other an inch. As we expected. To be fair, Moore starting off at a rapid pace. You just wonder whether Grant Crooks might have the measure of him later on in the contest, being the more experienced man. And straight away, he's now on the attack as well. Moore holds a nice tight guard. Um, Crooks maybe just falling in a little bit or, or rushing in a little bit. He just needs to get inside, get in behind those shots, behind that jab. That's much better. Both of them up on the ropes. Referee for this one is Chris Lang, by the way, looking after things this evening. Experienced man in the ring. Moore just holding that really nice, tight defence. He's taking quite a lot of uh, Crook's shots on the gloves. They're both very tall fighters, these, aren't they? There's not, I don't think there's much in it in terms of height advantage. And they're both really sizing each other up at the moment Grant Crooks one of the mountain men from 4-5 Commando based up there in Arbroath huge support for him amongst the Marines here tonight oh well that's a good little combination from him certainly got through the, uh, the more defences there looking for it again confident looking fighter isn't he he is yeah i think he just perhaps needs to move the head that little bit more when he when he slips and he throws off that slip when his head's off the center line it's hard to hit and actually he throws some really nice combinations there so he needs to keep that head movement going but otherwise um more is just just coping well with the pressure yeah he is yeah defying his years really as a development champion stepping up really for the first time at the senior level Big moments ahead in this first round, perhaps. As we approach the last few seconds. More in the blue. Sorry, more, more in the red. Crooks in the, the blue. End of that first round, even Stephen. I think so, yeah, what a great uh, round that was. Lots of punches exchanged, lots of skill. Yeah, technically very good, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Technically very good, uh, good boxing, and I'm sure both uh, both coaches will be really pleased with the start their men have made. Really deep instructions now going on. Martin Stead now just a big again. <laughs> but. Uh, I say it's been a brilliant atmosphere here this evening in the uh, the senior rates mess at uh, HMS Drake. Brilliantly organised event here. I say a very good evening to uh, to Brum, who has organised it. They've done a great job. The and uh, the PT staff really here at uh, at HMS Drake. Magnificent effort from them to put this show on, along with a huge amount of work from so many people down here at uh, Devonport Dockyard. In the second round then of this contest, Moore getting a, a good little jab through there. But, uh, Crook's coming back at him. shots but uh, by doing so he's opening himself out a little bit and Moore's very good at picking his shots he is yeah. he's really showing his, uh, his skill here the least experienced of the two boxers but uh, at the moment he's really got an old pair of an old head on his young shoulders that's for sure yeah fantastically composed the nice cut, tight guard most of those are being defended uh, the shots thrown by crooks and he's just picking his shot biding his time is it enough though to uh, to convince the judges who knows a 
Crooks still looking very confident here, gets his man on the ropes, lays in a couple of punches. Will they score? It's into the body, really going for it. Now Brooks needs to come back now. Excellent work then from both men. Great defence from Crooks. There's more counters. versus accuracy and it yeah. depends what the judges prefer yeah. to see much more work rate from crooks he really is working so hard isn't he but uh, more as well defending brilliantly when he has to and uh, as you say accuracy is he getting the more accurate punches in I think he's, he's landing the more uh, single shot it just depends uh, whether the volume is what you prefer to see or uh, or if the single scoring shots are there's a little bit of subjectivity there Right at the end of round two here. Crooks again scores then with a punch. Yeah, well, again, pretty even, Lucy. As you say, it's quality versus quantity, isn't it, I suppose? Just depends which way the judges see it. Good evening to those of you who are joining us later on this evening here at HMS Drake. Good evening again to Jamie Dorg, a very loyal follower of our forces sports at Leicester Tigers. Good evening to you, Jamie. Great to have you with us, watching up there in Luff, in um, Market Harborough, I believe, up in Leicestershire tonight. And don't forget, the, uh, the Forces Sports action continues tomorrow with more live coverage from the final match in the Inter-Services netball up there at RAF Cosford. A model battle that's going to be between the Army and the RAF. Basically a final. So we're looking forward to that tomorrow. Joining Kath and the team up there. But we're back to the final round here of uh, this middleweight contest. Fusilier Moore against... Marine Crooks. And presumably both men are really going to go for it now, Lucy, aren't they? You know, it's been so tight. They've got to make it clear. Yep, nobody can afford to take the foot off the gas. I don't think there's any blue water between them, really. Any clear blue water at the moment. No. Or red water. <laughs> Referee just pulls them back. Chris Lang has not had to step in too much at all in this fight, has he? It's been, you know, technically very good. A little touch there from Moore. Hooks on his way back. Listen to me, listen to me, says Chris Lang. Cheeky couple of shots yeah, on there. It was rather cheeky. <laughs> you, the you won't score those, will he? Because they, they went in and they shouldn't have done. You get a bit carried away with the adrenaline there. Sometimes you don't hear very well. Well, they probably can't hear anything in the ring. It's so noisy. There's so much of an atmosphere here. It's just fantastic. There's a little bit pushing going on with the red. I'd quite like to see the referee perhaps uh, just giving an equal warning to Redder. More. Got a couple of punches in there. Referee just says keep it, keep it higher. Business end of this fight now. Crooks just needs to change. You know, he changes the angle well. I just like him to throw a punch on top of that as he sort of switches his feet around, just to make it clear and get out of that hold. Connor Moore is really going for it here in these last few moments. 
He's defended brilliantly. He's scored a lot of high quality punches here. He may well just have done enough against a really experienced opponent. 35 bouts to his name, 20 wins. He knows all about winning. But so does Conor Moore, the UCAF development champion. Cites that as his biggest achievement so far in boxing. This could be even better if he wins this senior title. And it really is in the last few seconds here. Conor Moore in the red, Grant Crooks in the blue corner. And that's the end of the fight. And both men have given us a hugely high quality fight. I don't think they stopped punching or working at least, you know, he had more that was closing the range down. He wasn't allowing Crooks to throw shots, which tactically is a great approach. He just caught him on the odd single shot uh, on the break, some well, on the break and on the change of angle. Um, and Crooks gave everything he's possibly got. You can see the fatigue there in both of the men's faces. Yeah, both of them absolutely shattered after that. And uh, as you said, I think at the interval, Lucy, uh, none of these boxers are leaving very much in the ring at the end. No. So, what's the verdict? We're about to find out. certainly was. And the winner of bout number seven by unanimous points decision in the blue corner. So Grant Crooks gets it. It's a unanimous decision. Again, I think it was much closer than that, Lucy. Well, it just means that the majority of the, the judges thought he won two out of the three. So, yeah. you know, it could have, it doesn't, just as unanimous doesn't make it uh, a wide margin. It, you know, it was a really close fight. Yeah. Um, and it went, the judges went for volume over, Both over quality. Men work, absolutely. Both men worked so hard there, though, didn't they? It was a terrific fight. And again, quite right, the, the, the applause around the ring here for these two men who've, uh, who've given us a really high quality fight. Yeah, great boxing. And they left everything in there. You can see, you can see the tiredness and the fatigue at the end. Yeah, a great display. Number seven will be presented by the base points for officer HMS Drake. For officer Steve Harvey, Royal Navy. The runner-up on bout number seven is Fusilier Connor Moore. Such a good contest, that was. And the winner of bat number seven and the into service middleweight boxing champion is Marie Grant Terrific performance from you tonight. Oh, I could have boxed a lot better. Uh, it definitely went to the right man, so that's all I'm going to say. So, congratulations and yeah, well done, man. Yeah, what well, my night. Uh, yeah, great title to win. It was a really hard fought battle. Oh, cheers, mate. I, I mean, hats off. Absolutely fit and I had to dig deep to get kind of like absolutely brilliant box, box of life. What does it mean to you to win that title? Oh, everything over the moon, like. Be two good lads now, be a good rough lad, a good army lad, and 
just to come out on top, it's brilliant. Like, so thanks very much for all the support, everyone. It means the world. It was like class life. I know you'll be back though. You won that uh, development title. You want a bit more? Yeah, my goal is obviously to win that. So touch wood next year. But it went to the right man side. So congratulations. Well done, both. Congratulations. Good fight, mate. Well done. Ultimate bouts of the evening. It's uh, we're getting into the uh, the heavier lads now. This is the cruiserweight bout, and again we've got a Royal Marine in action. Joel Hassan from 4-2 Commando, and he's up against his army counterpart, Corporal Nick Wright from 216 Para Squadron Royal Signals. Both of these lads are from the northeast of England, so it's a bit of a, a bit of a local squabble. This down here in, in Devon. Well, Nick Wright, two one six Para Squadron Royal Signals. He's from first. He says his greatest achievement is the birth of his two daughters. And you can't ask her any better than that, Lucy. Absolutely not, yeah. And it puts everything into perspective, doesn't it, really? Because remember, these guys, they're soldiers, marines, whatever, first. Great sportsmen, second. But they're also, their families are everything to them. And as far as Joel Hassan is concerned, well, he's from Sunderland. His greatest achievement is making the England youth team. He's got 52 fights behind him, so he's got a real pedigree here, and he's won 35 of them. He knows his way around the ring. He does. I think he's had quite a break. Most of his uh, bouts have been at junior youth level, so he's had quite a break since then. So he's coming back into it, back into it at senior and elite level. So, but he's certainly uh, stepped it up. He certainly made that transition. Great result in semi-finals on Tuesday. Again, huge support for the Royal Marine here from 4-2 Commando. Red, white, blue, Hassan. And refereeing this evening is uh, Paul Rosendale. In fact, Paul will be looking after both of these. Paul back in the, in the uh, ring again. So Joel Hassan following very much in his father's footsteps, who used to box for the Royal Navy. And I'm sure if he's uh, able, he will be watching tonight. John Douglas says, great night of boxing tonight, Will all to all the boxers. And I couldn't agree more with you on that one, John. And these two have really set off at a rip-roaring pace here. And these are big chaps. Cruiser weights 86 kilos. But they're moving around like flyweights at the moment. Referee just uh, pulling it back. Nick Wright in red, Joel Hassan in the white strip of the Royal Navy, Royal Marines. From 4 2 Commando. Right, taking the fight to his opponent at the moment. But uh, Hassan is holding his own very much in the ring. And these guys are really going for it.
both of them looking for a little bit of a knockout shot there. I think there's a few, few swinging shots going in, but to be honest, at this way, he takes one shot. It does. And the right and the left, a really good combination there from, from right. But Hassan fights back. And this has got all the makings of a volcanic explosion at some stage. to just use those angles he needs to prevent right from pushing him back to the ropes if he wants to regain that advantage uh, but some good boxing by right here in fact good boxing by both oh that was a really excellent uh, hook there from right getting his right hook in a few jabs as well as his hand hits back both boxers content to stand toe to toe <laughs> And this is really one heck of a first round, that's for sure. Well, surely they can't keep this up throughout the whole contest, but they're really still going for it. Brilliant first round, Lucy. Fantastic. They didn't stop throwing. You know, they're, like you say, they're, they're, like, they're like flyweights in terms of the pace and the volume of shots being thrown. Um, let's see if they can keep it up the second and third round. They're fit men, they're athletes, they're full-time athletes. Um, there's no reason why they can't. But... As for, the, uh, as for who won that round, not sure it's very close. No, I've just put uh, an equal sign on there because I think that was that was pretty close. In fact, it was very close indeed. So um, I think that sort of set the the, uh, the standard really for what's to come in the rest of this this contest. The uh, Royal Marine there getting all his instructions from his corner at the moment from uh, the. Uh, the chief coach for the Royal Navy, the Royal Marines, Joel Kirkby, tonight. As we prepare for round two. And the quality just doesn't stop here. The quality still so high. What about this? These two absolutely flying at, the, at each other. Wouldn't want to be on the end of any of these, would you, Lucy? No, me I'll tell you. <laughs> Real ferocious battle. Both men really. Neither man willing to give an inch. Sometimes you just need a little half step back just so that you can uh, you can take advantage, you can land your own shots, but actually if you have standing, time. <laughs> yeah, but standing toe to toe sometimes gives you an opportunity for a rest, which sounds a little uh, sounds a little strange, but sometimes it, that footwork running, you know, keeping on the move is very tiring. If you ever doubt the quality of these men who are prepared to go into battle, they are going into battle here showing all the courage and aggression that makes these the best fighters in the world. Absolutely going for it. And I'm sure that uh, Nick Wright's Unit 216 Paris Squadron are watching this with a huge amount of pride, as will be 4-2 Commando tonight. Seeing their two men in the ring here, we've had some terrific battles. This is right up there at Cruiserweight amongst it. So little to separate them at the moment. All scoring punches at the moment. If anything, Wright is probably just the more aggressive of the two. Lovely little uppercut there by Wright. What a contest. This second round as good as the first. Hassan's got right just on the ropes at the moment, but oh, great. And that was a really good punch there. Caught him on the side of the head. He'd have felt that one would have right, but he's come storming back. Punch for punch. And again, absolutely no quarter given here. This is such good boxing.
And I know that our friends at uh, Boxing England are involved in watching this this evening. Can't help but be impressed as we head into the last seconds of this second round. Rare, terrific stuff. Brilliant, brilliant boxing. And again, nothing to separate them. And they're absolutely dead level so far. Really, nothing to celebrate, nothing to uh, to separate these two going into the final round. Who knows which way this one's going to go? It's good stuff. It really is. Listen to the atmosphere here. You do not get a better atmosphere anywhere in military sport than you do this. Hassan's got him down, but I think he slips. I don't think that will count as a, a knockdown. He's not taking a punch. He just slipped over there, did right. And he'll come storming back. He won't like that at all. But Hassan keeps up the barrage. and rights from both of them. It's like a welterweight contest, this. It really is. None of them willing to step off. And if you step off, you give the opponent a gap. Some of them perhaps just need to step... Someone needs to step to the side just to change the angle, just to give yourself a different perspective. Oh. It's a great entertainment. There, the uppercut there from... Right, if that had hit his target, well, I'm not sure that uh, Hassan would have uh, noticed too much, but uh, it didn't. Right, calling his opponent on now. Yeah, right, really beginning to step it up here. This feels he can really go for it. What can Hassan do? Oh, and again, the sun, the counters. Oh, shot. And real, right responds. A real quality one from the sun there. Nothing between these two. This is really terrific boxing here. The referee just pulls them aside, and we can continue. Right almost slipped over again there. Both exchanged, I it's think. It's absolutely there. amazing. This is a brilliant fight. And Wright setting about his opponent. As Hassan. Is there such a thing as a dead heat in a, in a boxing <laughs> Unfortunately match? Unfortunately not. Someone's <laughs> got to win, but I don't envy the judges. If anything's ever going to be a split decision, this one is. I cannot see this being unanimous on either side because both of them have given absolutely hooked. everything response to an uppercut by right and continue to do so this is there's been some terrific bouts this is surely the bout of the night so far lucy oh without a doubt just listen to the crowd you know what an entertaining fight what spirit what courage great display of boxing great military Last value five seconds who's going to take this these guys have absolutely won it in the ring. Both of them. What a fight. And look how they embrace each other at the end. Such mutual respect. And everybody here is on their feet and absolutely right. Everyone on their feet applauding these two men who have given absolutely everything in a brilliant, brilliant contest. Well, what can you say? I mean, you know, if, they're, if you didn't see... Uh, an illustration of core values in that ring just then, military core values. What a fantastic performance by both boxers. Well, 
Joel Hassan and Nick Wright. Absolutely brilliant boxers, and look at that. They love each other, really. <laughs> what sport do you punch each other in the face for three rounds like that and then embrace after? What a fight. What an amazing battle that was. And I think it really was indeed. Neither deserves to lose. And the winner of bout number eight by a split points decision. Joel Hassan takes it, but my goodness me, it must have been so, so close. He's absolutely over the moon about it. But both of these men, well, what do you say? What an achievement, what a great fight. That's going to live for a long time in the memory, Lucy. Brilliant. And he's done his father proud, Dean Hassan, who represented uh, the Royal Marines in the, the uh, Royal Navy and Royal Marines. You yeah. know, wow, what a fantastic performance. Yeah. But of course, right, wow, what an opponent. Oh. Very, very difficult to come off uh, second best in a bout like that. And as we, you know, just coming behind us now, Ladies both both the fighters are taking the applause. just stronger and better boxer than me on the day. All full credit to him. Really, really tough lad. I hit him with a kitchen sink and he just stood there and had it. Well, I think we can say, Joel, you know, how can two men go like that in the ring and then give each other a huge hug? Honestly, him? all credit to Nick. He just stood there and took it and we both just give as good as what we both were doing. Honestly, hardest lad I've fought. Hardest guy you've fought. I've boxed lads on the England team, I've boxed lads from GB team, and honestly, one of the hardest lads I've fought. Strong as a bull, and I wish them all the very best. Well, you two represent the very best in British military core values tonight. To go like that, and you've seen what the reaction has been in the fans, you both deserve to be huge successes. Well done, both. Thank you so much. Can I just say thank you to the squadron? Six and a half hour drive the lads did. Massively appreciate it. Nice Cheers, one. Thank you. And your dad will be proud of you. I know, say, I just want to say to Joe Purvis, Jimmy Richardson, Sunderland ABC, I dedicate this fight to them and Joel Kirby and James McKee. Without them, I wouldn't be here right now. My mum and dad love you so much. Well done, guys. Thank you. Well, 
as they say, Lucy, follow that. Uh, that was terrific. And two great guys there, just brilliant to talk to them. And, uh, you know, they have uh, really made this a very special competition tonight, just those two, as all the boxers have. But that was that was a special. You don't see too many fights like that, do you? No way, no way. What a spectacle. What a fantastic uh, experience for the, for the supporters, the audience here, to watch a fight like that. Absolutely. Well, we've come to the final bout of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, sad though it is, because I think we could uh, watch that sort of stuff all night for hours and hours. But uh, we are into the final bout of the evening now, which is a uh, heavyweight contest, 92 kilos. And uh, in the ring for the British Army is Lance Corporal Jack Hindmarsh from Three Rifles. He's also from Sunderland up in the northeast of England. And he's taking on from the Royal Marines, Gabriel Rand Silver from RM Pool from 40 Commando down there in uh, in Pool. Uh, his hometown is Biddeford, so he's a Devon boy. And he says his greatest achievement was a Royal Marines heavyweight champion. 14 bouts to his name, nine wins. Ladies and Hindmarsh says his greatest achievement, UCAF elite champion. Is a 92 kilogram heavyweight contest between in the red corner, representing the army, Lance Corporal Jack Hindmarsh. So Jack Hindmarsh in the red corner. And in the blue corner, representing the Royal Navy, Marine Gabriel Rensilva. Just a few comments we've had, obviously, from uh, this evening, from the previous fight. Ben Jones, they'll wake up knowing they were in a fight. Heart of Lions, both of them. And Sean Evans, respect to both fighters there. That was a tough one. You're absolutely right, both of you. So what are we going to get then in this final bout of the evening at heavyweight? Well, let's see, because the standard is so, so high this evening, Lucy. It is. By contrast, I think, we, you know, we see some, at least in the first few seconds, we've got a quite a tentative uh, fencing approach from both boxers. I suspect that might change as, uh, as things develop. <laughs> Rand Silver, say from 40 Commando. And Royal Marines pool. And uh, the Royal Marines heavyweight champion. Nine wins in his 14 bouts, it's five defeats against the UCAF elite champion, Jack Hindmarsh, wanting to retain that title. Seen Hindmarsh before, Lance Corporal in three rifles. Referee Paul Rosendale again looking after this one. Great refereeing this evening, great officials, superb official them tonight. Yeah, we absolutely couldn't do without them, and no. they give their time, and uh, it's a tough job. It's just so professional, you know, the whole thing is such a, such a professional organisation. And uh, a great tribute to military sport, and we're very proud to bring it to you here, live on Forces News, on our YouTube channel and Facebook. And I know we're getting it, and there's some great uh, viewings tonight. Thanks to all of you for tuning in. But we've still got uh, a really good contest to finish with. opening then to this opening round. Rand Silver then with a, a couple of shots there. Not seen too much from either men so far, but you just get the feeling that one of them might launch an Exocet missile before too long. I think Hindmarsh is, is just edging it on the, on the scoring shots, just with those sort of fairly swift straight shot counters. 
Ran Silva is slight height advantage perhaps okay so point taken off from the Navy sorry the Royal Marine I lost a point there And who knows, that could prove crucial at the end of this. Army, of course, already are the champions and they have enjoyed themselves this evening. But despite that, we have thoroughly enjoyed this night of boxing. words then coming from the coaches Martin Stead giving his four penny worth to uh, Jack Hind Nosh and the same coming from the Navy side of things to Gabriel Rand Silver back they go he's got a point to make up he's got a point to prove Well experienced, he's got the pedigree behind him from having taken this title before. It's going to take a lot for the Marine to get it off him. Now stiff, stiff jab there by Hindmarsh. Yeah. I think Rand Silver just needs to edge in with his feet just a tiny bit more, throw more than one shot just to get himself in range. Heinmarsh is moving really well and actually looks really composed. A little untidy at the moment. That will suit Jack Heinmarsh, of course. Just a couple of combinations there. Just trying to work his way through the That's high marsh defence. But high marsh is well on top of this at the moment. Looking very comfortable, I have to say. Silver though just beginning to bit of a put a bit of a flurry together here. That's it. Can't afford to wait. He's got to put the shots together. He has. He's got to change the angle and he's got to get in. He's got to get his feet in. He's got to be very careful with his head. The referee's very stringent on he, the point. He's already lost a point because of that. That kind marsh using all his experience at the moment just to stifle his opponent and score when he can that's the end of round two then and the bell sounds second round over Heinmarsh? I think so. Yeah, just very composed from the centre of the ring. He's countering well. Yeah, very... I must say, he's looking quite confident there, just sort of uh, in his discussions with uh, with Martin Stead there in his corner. A little bit more animated on the, uh, the blue side of uh, the house at the moment. And... Uh, 
Gabriel Rand Silva has just got to produce something a little bit special, I think, in this third round if he's gonna turn this he's gonna turn this round. Yeah, he's definitely gotta put the pressure on. Um he's gotta win it I think he's gotta win it ten eight. Um he's gotta put the pressure on, he's got to close the space down, he's gotta change the angles, he's gotta use the phases, all of those great things, but he's gotta pull it out of the bag now. Well let's see if that happens. The last round of boxing of this season's Inter-Services Championship here at HMS Drake. And who is going to take this heavyweight title? Will it be Hindmarsh or will it be Rans Silva? Both men really having to go for it now. Hindmarsh though knows that he's barring any disasters has got a really good chance. Took one to the head there, just a, a jab, and he comes back. It's a, such a different contest to what we saw in the cruiserweight. Much more tentative, really. Measured, I suppose you could say. Yeah, much more technical. More technical, yeah. You know, the, the previous bout was was all heart, <laughs> and I think this is this is quite a lot of skill here. So a really good contrast. Yeah. Yeah, and take nothing away from either of these, and certainly take nothing away from Gabriel Rand Silva. He's making a really good fist of this. But Jack Hindmarsh just has that air of confidence about him in the ring, doesn't he? And he's just waiting. He's waiting really patiently. He's not taking any risks, which of course you can't afford to do at heavy. He's just waiting for Rand Silva just to fall in a little bit short, and he's capitalising on that. Is at the moment halfway through this final round. Ooh, Rand's got one in there. Rand Silva just got one in on High Marsh. He felt it. He's going to need a few more of those. Huge amount of encouragement coming from both corners for their men. Just giving it their all. Nice little combo there from Silva. But Hindmarsh seems to have the measure of him. <laughs> Opening up then in these last few moments. It's a tiring business out there, it really is. <laughs> Three minutes feels like three hours when you're in there. Yeah, all of these have been three three-minute rounds. It's been uh, a long, long night. Great night of boxing here in Plymouth at Devonport. And we're approaching the end now. Has Jack Hindmarsh done enough? Has Gabriel Ransilva done enough to claim this heavyweight belt? All will be revealed very, very shortly. The last punch is thrown. It's all over. Well done, guys. I think Hindmarsh will feel that he's done enough. I think he has. Very measured performance. Good tactics. Well, let's see if it's a unanimous points or whether it goes to a split judge's decision. Whatever happens, the army pretty delighted tonight because they keep this title once more <clears throat> only once I think in the last what nearly 40 years have uh, the Royal Navy taken it from the army that was back in 2018 a long seems a long long time ago but uh, both boxers have given their all here we'll see who's going to come out on top Ladies and gentlemen, and the winner from bout number nine, by unanimous voice decision, in the red corner, it's Well, we got that one right, didn't we, Lucy? <laughs> it was a unanimous decision in favour of Jack Hyde-Marsh, who was the quality boxer there,
against a quality opponent, but Hein Marsh just had a little bit more. A little bit more experience, I think, showed through yeah. there. Yeah, his experience that came to the fore. So that title belt is back with him again, and he'll be absolutely thrilled about that. But make no mistake, uh, Gabriel will be back himself, and he'll be in there to fight the another day. From out number nine will be presented by Brigadier Chris King, the chairman of Army Boxing. The runner-up of bout number nine is Marine Gabriel Van Silva. in here. Great performance, gentlemen. Gabriel, first of all, you gave your all tonight, but you're up against a very, very high quality opponent. Yeah, no, he's really showed his class tonight. Um, wasn't expecting him to be that tricky, and uh, yeah, it shows why he's where he is. <laughs> and Jack, must feel pretty good retaining that title. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm buzzing. A great performance by Gabs. Hey, but I just put into work everything I've been doing with the coaches for it's been a long time, I've worked hard and it's just not going big and going daft, just actually boxing. And uh, he put up a fight and really enjoyed it. It was a good fight. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a great night of boxing all round with some terrific contests. And obviously you gave us a, a great climax to the, the event tonight. Disappointing, obviously, Gabriel, for the, the Navy. You, you'll yeah. live to fight another day. You'll be back. Yeah, yeah of course. You know, this is my first time doing the elites. You know, I've still had an under-20 fight, so I'll definitely be back in years to come. Big uh, learning curve. Yeah, definitely. Big learning curve. And Jack, what does it mean to the army once again? I mean, you've retained this title. You, you, you know, you feel you own it. Means everything to us. I can <laughs> tell by the crowd here now. Everyone's buzzing, and I'm just glad I would add to that to the win. Yeah, everyone's on their bits tonight. Gentlemen, congratulations. Cheers. Well done. Thanks very much Thank for a great you. night. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. So, great talking to those two guys again. You know, great respect for each other, uh, as as we've seen all night, actually, Lucy. And, uh, you know, there have been some terrific bouts this evening, haven't there? It's yeah. been a great night. What an absolute pleasure to watch the performances in there. You know how much hard work has gone into it, not just for the boxers, but the coaches, the referees and judges. Um, you know, it's been a real pleasure to watch that and to see the fruits of their labour in there. OK, time for the big presentation then to happen now of the, the trophy. Over to Brigadier Tanner. Just a couple of thank yous before the, uh, the final prizes. Firstly, what an absolutely fantastic night of boxing. Some of genuinely some of the best boxers I've seen in service boxing in many years. So congratulations to all the boxers. Big round of applause there. Thank you. The first 
SMS to Babcock for sponsoring the event. Then on to uh, the captain of the base, David Priest, and the, uh, the base warrant officer, Mr. Harvey. Thank you for hosting us tonight. Brigadier Mike Tanner then, with his closing Brigadier speech. Tanner will now present the Inter-Service Elite Boxing Championship 2023 Best Boxer Award. This year, it will go to Private Lewis So Lewis Harvey wins the Best Boxer Award in a very, very early fight tonight, right at the beginning of the evening, for his performance. And usually the most gallant boxer goes to the person he's beaten, doesn't it? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege to welcome Mr. Austin Lewis, Vice President of Babcock, who will be presenting the 2023 Elite Boxing Championships Team Winners Trophy. This year, the trophy is awarded to the Army. So it remains in the hands of the British Army, this elusive trophy as far as the Royal Navy or Royal Marines are concerned but they will be back they will be back absolutely it's the army's trophy And no doubt all the boxers will be coming into the ring now. Ladies and gentlemen, big final applause. Let's bring the boxers for the army team. Well, Lucy, we've seen some outstanding fights tonight. And... Uh, I think the Army are, you will say, worthy champions once again. Yeah, most definitely. And, and the experience shone through there. Um, and uh, I wish every one of the, the winners tonight all the very best moving forward into the national championships. Well, we're just going to grab the last few moments here just as the, the Army are going to celebrate their title victory. Just to bring our broadcast to a close, it's been a, a long evening, around three hours we've been with you and hope that you've enjoyed our coverage tonight because it's been a terrific evening. You don't get much better military sports entertainment than you do when you have military boxers, when they give absolutely everything and they give their all and it's, uh, it's great, exciting stuff. And when you see the mutual respect that they have for each other at the end, I think that makes you realise how valuable this is. Time now for the coaches to come in, take their plaudits as well. 
the Navy and the RAF will come back once again. They'll dust themselves off. We'll have more forces boxing for you, by the way, back in uh, later on in April when we'll have the Army Team Championship Finals. That's going to be exciting in older shop. We're bringing you that action. Don't forget, tomorrow we've got more action for you from the netball, from the inter-services with the Army against the RAF, and that's going to be a terrific encounter up there at Cosford. And then next week, we're into live action as well on the slopes of Meribel. But now it's time for the boxers of the British Army to celebrate. And on that note, we are going to say a very good night to you. My huge thanks to Lucy O'Connor, who's been sat beside me this evening doing the commentary. Thoroughly enjoyable, Lucy. Great having you with us tonight. Also, a big thanks here to the team in uh, the venue tonight here at HMS Drake, to Chris, to Roger and Andy. And also, I'd like to say a big thanks to Dom and Christopher, our team back at H Quarters. But from me, John Knighton, and all the team here at HMS Drake this evening, Thanks for joining us. Don't forget, we've got loads more Force of Sport coming to you live here. But from now, a very good night. It's quick, it's exciting. You're always on your toes. You never know what to expect. the unexpected. I don't think anyone realises how fast and furious it is. It's a relentless game, there's nothing else like it. Sharp, snappy, uh, fast paced, uh, accurate, skillful, lots of tactics. It deserves to be there for all to see.